Boston defense, but right in the center of all of New England's hopes, hoping that he and the Red Sox can get a win and climb back into this series. He pitched very well, Tim, in the division series, that clincher, as it turned out, here at home against Anaheim. And then the bullpen coughed up the lead, the grand slam home run by Vladimir Guerrero. Very few pitchers particularly in postseason play will tell right handed hitters that he's going to come inside but Arroyo has said that I will come inside the right handed batters he's got a big sweeping breaking ball and even with a high leg kick he is very difficult to run on baseball fans grab a cold fresh Budweiser it's game time Take a look at the defense for the Boston Red Sox as they line up 10th in the AL in fielding percentage and we look at the defense brought to you by State Farm Ramirez Damon and Nixon in the outfield. We highlight Bellhorn. This has been a very solidly played postseason defensively for each of these two teams the Yankees and the Red Sox and away we go. Derek Jeter first up. Strike one. Broadcast also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television as Jeter, who is one for seven in this ALCS, took a strike. Seven hits this postseason. He leans back and he gets one inside. One ball, one strike. Again inside, two and one. Something that Roger Clemens said before his game three start today. A lot of these hitters look too comfortable. If they start to look too comfortable against me, I'm going to change it. He and the Houston Astros won today as Jeter checked it three and one. Well, that's the problem when you miss inside. First pitch was a sweeping curveball for a strike, then two fastballs inside, and now he misses with the breaking ball away and behind in the count three and one. A 3 1 is grounded to third foul. Full count. The combination on that sequence is good. It just missed far enough off the plate, but you saw Jeter just enough to check up. But what looked like out of his hand, the fastball in after the two fastballs in, makes him commit. Jeter good enough to hold off. Breaking balls fouled back. A rod and then Sheffield will follow here in the first inning for the Yankees up two games to none. A leadoff walk. Fastball stayed high and tight and Jeter is on to start the night for the Yankees. First pitch is a strike with a breaking ball and this is really what walked Jeter two fastballs missing inside he misses with the breaking ball two and one and after this pitch is fouled back he misses with another fastball now it's a rod up and in ball one and if you saw what the psyche that goes on in this here you have a, an inexperienced pitcher if you will in a royal. He throws a ball for gets Jeter on first base and Jeter's looking out at him like he threw it up and in on purpose. But that's more of Jeter being Jeter and knowing that let's get in this kid's head early. And you can see A-Rod almost lean the knee into that pitch. He would have taken that for the team easily. It missed him and it missed the strike zone. It's 2-0. Oh. Well if you're going to take one for the team take the curveball and not the fastball. It doesn't hurt as much. He tried to. So it's 2 and 0 Arroyo very confident as he takes the ball tonight you see what he's done in his career against the Yankees regular season and postseason. Aaron looking to smash something on 2 and 0. Arroyo gets it by him. 
Just a fastball away. Almost surprised A Rod and thinking maybe as many breaking balls as Arroyo throws. It looked like he was sitting off speed and a 2 0 fastball count. All winter long when Terry Francona was getting settled as the Red Sox manager he kept hearing about how much he was going to love Bronson Arroyo and he learned to during the course of the season Arroyo has run it to three and one after issuing a leadoff walk to Jeter. Gary Sheffield waits to hit next. Boston 4 and 0 this season against the Yankees in games Arroyo started. The 3 1 chased it full count. Joe Torre keeping Jeter calm at first base. Not a good idea to run on a 3 1 count with a good hitter at the plate, but he'll be running now. Rodriguez hits it down into the left field corner. Jeter will head for third. Ramirez digs it out. They bring Jeter to the plate, and the Yankees have scored first. An RBI double by Alex Rodriguez. And it's one to nothing New York in the first inning. A breaking ball right over the heart of the plate, and because Jeter was running, he scores rather easily. Right down the line. Hitting the base of the monster to the right of the 310 side. Jeter running on the play, sensing it, sniffing it as the Yankees take the lead. A very poor relay by Manny Ramirez to Cabrera. A good play to Cabrera by Cabrera to get the ball to Baratek. The Yankees take the lead. Now at Sheffield, runner at second with nobody out. Strike one. Sheffield, who just lets it fly, he had two different sessions when he had to take cortisone injections in his injured left shoulder. But it's amazing, even on a chilly night, for a guy whose shoulder is killing him and may be looking at off-season surgery, the way he swings the bat. Intimidating, to say the least. And right on top of the plate with that guard on his left elbow. Look at that. 0-2. That's one of those pitches when you throw it you realized even though it's only a strike and a foul ball you made a mistake. You do not want to live there. You can't live there or you're not going to see the fifth inning. That ball was right down the middle. Reaching for it to spoil it still 0 2. Isn't that the amazing part of Sheffield though a guy who can take the swings he took on the first two pitches and can lean out and just get a little piece of this pitch. You don't think he's as controlled as he is with that type swing. Arroyo's 0 2 in the air to center field Damon. A loud long first out and Rodriguez will end up at third so a productive out. Runner at third one out. Here's Bronson Arroyo talking about the pressure of pitching in this game three. That's why I want to be a starting pitcher. It's uh, you know you enjoy being in those situations and uh, you know I'm hoping I, I can be the guy to go out there pick the team up you know come back to one. Give us a little momentum, hopefully going into game four and give us an opportunity to, uh, you know, to extend the series. And you would have to believe for a realistic chance at coming back in this series. He has to do that tonight. And Joe, this is very unusual. The infield is pinched in, particularly the middle infielders. Normally, managers would play him back in this situation, not the Red Sox. I think it's a good idea because of all the ground balls Matsui hits more so last year than this year. 
But the Red Sox taking a mild gamble playing the infield in here in the first inning. One ball, one strike. Bernie Williams will follow. A leadoff walk to Jeter, an RBI double by Rodriguez, and he's at third after the fly ball off the bat of Sheffield. Another foul, one and two. You may see A Rod go in on contact. Bill Miller, the third baseman, playing way off the bag. And what you try to do if you're the runner at third is, is get off as far as the third baseman is. With the pitch, Rodriguez will move forward. Way down the line is Matsui, hits it to deep right field. Back is Nixon at the wall. This ball is gone. Home run, Matsui, and it's 3 0 Yankees in the first. A walk, a double. A long fly out and now a home run. And Dave Wallace is going to have to pay a first inning visit to Bronson Arroyo. So the Yankees for the third straight game score first and they put up three so far. Tries to come inside with the fastball and didn't get it all the way in there. A 1 2 fastball that Arroyo would like to have back, and the Yankees will tell you nobody's gotten any more big hits than Matsui on the season. A Rod cheering it out of the park, and it's 3 0. And Arroyo has been hit hard here in the first. Now it's Bernie Williams. Strike one. Last thing the Red Sox wanted down two games to none was to walk into this slap in the face here in the first inning. One ball, one strike. Well, the crowd's taken out of it very early. And that's the one thing Terry Francona and the Red Sox wanted this Fenway faithful. Right side, another hit. And Bernie Williams is on with only one out here in the first. Because of the question marks surrounding the starting rotation for the rest of the series for the Boston Red Sox, they don't have as many long relievers available to them in their bullpen tonight as this one gets past the glove of Villar. Mendoza would be the obvious choice, but Wakefield is the scheduled game four starter, and then as of the moment, the Red Sox are looking at Derek Lowe for game five on Monday. Two guys that were in the bullpen the first two games of this series. Strike one to Posada. There's Derek Lowe. Here's an 0 1. One ball, one strike. Kevin Brown, the 39 year old right hander, will be on the mound for the Yankees in the bottom of this inning. Guy who's been bothered with a bad back and then the broken left hand. Pitched well in game three of the division series at Minnesota. They got the victory and he'll be staked to at least a three run first inning lead. In the division series, the New York Yankees never scored first. And the Red Sox have never been ahead in this series. Breaking ball for strike two to Posada. This is where as a pitch you have to realize it's a one two count. He could go two two three two before he has to make an action ball over the plate. Unlike what he did for Matsui in a one two count and a poor location on a fastball. He's got two pitches to expand the zone here. And that foul tip caught the home plate umpire John Hirschbeck and still one and two.
Breaking balls have to be down in a one-two count. It was low, but he still has more room for in the dirt. Posada is a notorious fastball hitter and hasn't done well with off-speed pitches, especially the changeup going down and away. Veritek sets up away, and Posada slaps it foul. 90-mile-an-hour fastball. I would imagine, guys, that would be a natural reaction, though, for a young right-hander who's just given up three runs, now another base hit. Imagine it's hard to remember you can expand the zone when you've got the advantage on a hitter like he does here with Posada. Arroyo on one and two, and Posada fouls another. See what Joe Torre's group has done in the first inning of this ALCS. Seven for 14 with six runs scored. Two in game one, one in game two, and three here in game three. One on, one out. Posada's jammed up the middle. Might be two. Cabrera, double play. The Yankees keep on rolling. After a half in game three, Yankees up, three zip. The League Championship Series on Fox brought to you by DirecTV. Sports in 100% digital quality. DirecTV, sports biggest fan by T-Mobile. Get more minutes, more features, more service. And by AIG for insurance, loans, and retirement. AIG, we know money. Right-hander Kevin Brown on the mound for the Yankees. Game three starter in the division series, and the Yankees stay with him here in the ALCS. Started the season 5-0. June 15th went on the disabled list bothered by a bad back and an intestinal parasite and then seven starts after coming off the DL he broke his hand on September 3rd after a loss to Baltimore when he punched a wall in the clubhouse had to apologize to the organization to his teammates pitched poorly off the disabled list coming back in a game here at Boston then pitched well against Toronto. And here he is, his second start of the postseason. One ball, one strike. Kevin Brown, the starter for the Yankees. Johnny Damon, the starter for the Red Sox. He has got to get on for the Red Sox to be successful. Five strikeouts and eight at bats, 0 for 8 on the series. He said, I've got to be better, I will be better, and that not only on the shoulders of Damon but up and down this Red Sox lineup with I would say Ortiz and maybe Veritek the exceptions speaking of on the shoulders of Damon his hair is not as much on the shoulders of Johnny just off <laughs> 2 1 2 and 2 Johnny with the haircut two days ago not much of a history between Brown and Damon but Damon is 0 for 7 in his career. Granted, it's only seven at bats, but sometimes it still gets in the head of whoever is dominating. Up the middle to his left, Jeter gets it on the high hop, one out. Take a look at the lineup for the Boston Red Sox. You know Damon, he's gone. Now it's Bellhorn, Ramirez, and Ortiz. With Veritek, Nixon, Millar, Bill Miller, and Orlando Cabrera. Batting in the number nine spot, the big stat that everybody's been kicking around after the first two games. Boston won for 37. Now won for 38. The first six innings of these matchups with Yankee pitching. They have had two base runners in the first 12 innings of the first two games. It's tough to win. It is. They made some late inning noise, but that's really where the Yankees are best with their pitching staff. That's where you get into Gordon and then Rivera. 
So that's not the formula that the Red Sox thought about coming into this series. Here's Bellhorn, ball one. Mark only two out of 19 in this postseason. One ball, one strike. All fastballs from Kevin Brown thus far, seven in a row. On the inside corner, one and two. That's exactly what Kevin Brown has to do on these left-handed hitters. If he leaves his sinker out over the plate, if it's down, yes, you can hit it on the ground, or he'll try to have him hit it on the ground, but he must be able to pound, guys, so that these left-handed hitters can't pepper that green monster. Bellhorn strikes out. Two up, two down. And we look at the defense for the Yankees. See how they cover the field. It's brought to you by State Farm. Matsui, Bernie Williams, who at one point in his career was... Nearly a member of this Boston team, then Sheffield and Wright, Rodriguez, Jeter, Cairo, and Olrude with Posada catching Brown. Here's Manny Ramirez. Ramirez two for eight. No RBIs in this series with the Yankees after driving in seven against the Angels. Ball one. Big swing by Ramirez, a ball and a strike. It's very important for major league pitchers to work a lineup. And if you have two big sluggers in a lineup, it's very important also to splinter those two big hitters. Have a guy like Ramirez up with two out and nobody on, get him off and get him out, and then have Ortiz lead off, lead off the next inning. Here's a 1-1. Two balls and a strike. The innings one through six and what these two teams have done offensively. And what you lose and all that, or at least one thing we haven't highlighted, the starting pitching for the Yankees between Messina and Lieber. Lieber was phenomenal. Messina in game one had a perfect game going into the seventh. Three balls and a strike now on Ramirez. He'd like to put a charge into a ball and this crowd. Steady, it's a two hopper to third. What an amazing pickup by A Rod. Safe. With the amount of spin on that ball, that was. High popping that Rodriguez corralled that. Too far to go and too much to do. Fielding it too deeply and the long throw, not in time. Did what he could. Not quite enough. The last time David Ortiz stepped to the plate in a postseason game at Fenway Park. He sent the Red Sox into the ALCS with a 10th inning home run off Washburn of the Angels. He has hit some in this LCS. And he bats with Ramirez at first and two out. Ball one. Here it is, game three, division series, series over. And that's his stroke. Mo Vaughn esque in body and in swing. On the outside corner. That's why your point out was impressive because you really have to pitch guys inside to keep them from going out after that monster. This guy with tremendous power the other way. 
See what he's done in his career against Kevin Brown. That's inside, but a ball, two and one. This Red Sox team hit 304 this season at Fenway Park, compared to 260 on the road. Barry Francona talks about the different dimensions and the angles in the outfield with these hitters looking out that way trying to pick up pitches that it works to their advantage it better tonight the 2 1 Veritek on deck it's 3 and 1 back to what Tim alluded to about Damon leading off having to get the top two hitters in a lineup get something out of him. it makes it so much more difficult for the pitcher right now if he were facing Ortiz with first and second or second and third that's an obvious statement but it makes it a tough time to pitch to two great hitters in Ramirez and Ortiz the three one right side that's a base hit Ramirez will turn and go to third the throw there by Sheffield out to end the inning and that's a terrible mistake by Manny Ramirez. There is no way he can try for third base there. No way. After one, three nothing, New York. Un día bueno, todo se ve relativamente fácil. Que estás en comando de todo lo que está pasando en el terreno. Hoy es un día donde tú sabes que la victoria la puedes sentir. Pero esos son los días donde las cosas especiales pasan. I live for this. October, eight teams, one champion. Watch the World Series on Fox. Don't miss it. Ruben Sierra takes the ball low, and we're underway in the second inning. It's Sierra, Olrud, and Cairo. If anybody gets on, back to the top, Jeter. A three run first inning for New York. Already up two games to none, and the count's 2 0 on Sierra. Ruben. Getting his first at bat in this ALCS. There's a strike, two and one. There are so many things wrong with Manny Ramirez being thrown out, making the third out at third base, with the Red Sox trailing by three, two outs. The Red Sox had their two big guns hit in the same inning. That's in the gap in left center field. Sierra's on with the leadoff double. And let's go back to the end of the first inning and look at that base running play again. The thing, he had to hold up. Watch him hold up for the ball to get by him. So he didn't have a good jump from first base. Now he's safe at third. The Yankees got the call, but the point is this play can't be close when you're trailing by three runs. Watch the play one more time. The tag is high. The foot was in there, so he was safe, but it can't be close, and that's the point. Looked like the right foot of Ramirez got on the bag before the tag it was applied by Rodriguez. Joe West, the third base umpire. And now with a runner at second and nobody out, here's John Olroot. Deadly quiet here at Fenway Park. That's in for a strike. Old Rude hit a crushing home run for the Red Sox and it was a huge drive as it turned out a two run home run in game two. That's off the end of the bat for Cabrera. Runner at second one out. Let's check in with Chris Myers. Joe I'm, I'm down here on the uh, field you talked about Terry Francona how important the hometown Red Sox fans were for his team he said they are wacko in this kind of a series and they go bananas from the first pitch and they did but since then the Yankee bats have silenced this crowd and some of the Yankee players that in fact Gary Sheffield before the game saying we know they want to get up early in the game we're going to make it a point to get ahead of the Red Sox and take the crowd out of it. 
All right Chris it started with a leadoff walk then a double by Rodriguez to score Jeter a deep fly out by Sheffield and a two run home run by Matsui breaking balls popped up right side foul ball Millar gives it a look to him. And the Yankees missing a chance to this point with a leadoff double it's going to be up to Jeter Arroyo trying to pitch around that double by Sierra with Veritek Nixon and Millar coming up for the Red Sox in the second. Early runs do an awful lot on on both sides with the hitters that feel as though they have to get back into the game like the Red Sox and for a guy like Kevin Brown who's got a stake the three run lead you feel much more comfortable as the pitcher in a 2 0 2 1 3 1 count when you're throwing your fastball and knowing you have some wiggle room and as a result you're much more relaxed and you make your pitches. Runner at second two out Jeter takes ball one outside and I thought for the most part something you talked about early Al was Kevin Brown who was Kojo Torre stalking around the clubhouse yesterday with the rain delays and then the eventual rain out to stay under control and in the first inning he did as opposed to jumping at everybody and trying to blow every hitter away the counts two and zero on Jeter. A leadoff double. Olrud popped up. So did Cairo. And now a 2 0 pitch. Jeter takes ball three. Now if you see where A Rod is, the angle really, he, he's almost behind home plate. And to me, that's unfair for the pitcher. He's got a pretty good perspective of uh, almost standing behind home plate. Three and one. You'll see hitters at various parks where they'll almost get almost right behind home plate. And what they're doing is they're just seeing arm angle. He's looking in the backdrop in center field as to what to pick up. Release point. Funny thing here at Fenway Park there is no on deck circle. Jeter a full count. So your deck's bigger. <laughs> it's a bigger deck that, that hitters have to work with. That's where all the paraphernalia that the hitters use are but there's no circle in which a hitter technically has to stand. John Hirschbeck the home plate umpire could force Rodriguez to move if he wished. Runner at second two out three balls two strikes on Jeter. Into right center field and Nixon takes it in. That ball hit a long way by Jeter. But good work by Arroyo to get around that leadoff double. Veritek coming up. Bottom of the second, 3 0 Yankees. And Jason Veritek is first up. Nixon and Millar will follow. Ball one. I got to know when I came into the park that said sometime during the broadcast could you please wish Tim McCarver and myself Steve Portney Red Sox security a very happy birthday. Oh, that's nice. Thank happy you. birthday. Tim Thank you very much. That will just end it at that. I know you get a little touchy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Two and oh the count on Veritech. Kevin Brown pitched around back to back hits. In the first inning, Baratek takes ball three. Kevin Brown has not been good in this park. In his career at Fenway Park, he's two and five with a 6.14 ERA. Baratek takes a strike. Three and one. I'll tell you, with that wind up, of Kevin Brown's I don't see how he can pick the target up as well that was part of our scouting report almost looks away turns his back to home plate and somehow has good enough control he says on the leadoff walk 
Leadoff man is on for Boston throughout the LCS. We're going to identify a key matchup in the game and determine who holds a direct TV advantage. We compare the Red Sox starting lineup, their home and away batting averages. A distinct advantage here at home for this Boston nine. One run a game more on average at home than on the road. And here is Trot Nixon. Strike one. Some pitchers pick up a target. They pick up a spot on the catcher's mask or shoulder or knee uh, shin guards. It's a feel. And in Kevin's case, he has a feel for his delivery. And you can't explain it sometimes as to whether your timing is right. But he pick he doesn't pick up the target until late. But it's worked. And in many instances, a lot of guys do that. So that they don't laser their focus and their concentration on one spot. Turns away, and then he'll pick up. That's considered late, but he, he, he has a target. And here at Fenway, we couldn't think of a better guy than Louis Tia. Oh, right. He looked away. Right. El Tiante. A 1-1. One, one. Nixon, double hit. But it only counts as one strike. One ball, two strikes. On deck is Millar. Brown has always had that look about him where he's kind of huffing and puffing and just glaring in at these hitters. Menacing. Yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. one. He's ahead on the count on Nixon, a ball and two strikes. Two and two. Red Sox hitters making Kevin work. The 2 2 pitch. Down the right field line. Well hit. Back is Sheffield. At the wall, the Red Sox strike for two. Nixon makes it 3 2. this play some life again and it's a one run game in the second. Millar takes the ball. That was a sinker that ended up sinking about 378 feet from home plate in the stands not the plate. A 1 out of Millar. Ball and a strike. You come inside on a left handed hitter. Generally speaking, you go belt up. They're mostly low ball hitters. And as you saw in that replay, that was a low fastball down and in. Lefties know how to golf those. Millar gets into one to center field. Back is Williams at the wall, reaching for it. Two steps in front of it, one out. Here you see the pitch. It ends up inner half. It's inside corner down and in. You see it's knee high. You would think that's a good pitch, but to most left-handers, that's their sweet swing. That's their spot. It's actually a four-seamer, probably trying to cut it inside. Nixon's all over it. If you don't think you can lift balls that are low, think of a golf tee. Here's Bill Miller. The number eight man in this lineup for Terry Francona takes the ball outside. That's three hits and a walk against Kevin Brown to this point. 
Red Sox ran themselves out of the first. They put two up here in the second as Miller takes a strike. Three for six, two runs tonight compared to the early going in games one and two. Two and one. What the Red Sox have not been able to do, Tim, is get at the Yankee middle relief. And it just shows you that no matter how big your payroll is these days in baseball, 184 million, whatever the number, you are vulnerable in the middle. And if the Red Sox can get to the middle relief of this Yankees team, that's when they should do their damage. That's exactly right. One down the right field line. That ball's going to bounce up against the wall. Good play by Sheffield. He dropped it, but he got it back in in time to hold Miller to a double. If Get. Sheffield doesn't make this play, this ball's a triple. That's the tricky part. One of the tricky parts of this field right here. And one of the quirky little angles, you don't know whether to go close to the wall or back up. And Sheffield made a great play, then dropped the ball, holding Miller to a double. Once again, Brown trying to come inside on these lefties, which he has to here with the three monster in left field. But when you come in, he's got to be higher than that. He just missed him with his spots right now. Cabrera. Kevin Brown ball one to Cabrera. I don't think Brown has thrown a breaking ball yet. Everything has been for the most part. He's working off the fastball. You got to mix in some off speed stuff to these Red Sox hitters. Cabrera for the first time since joining the Red Sox is batting in the number nine spot. the response from these Red Sox fans for the Yankee fans at Yankee Stadium all over Pedro Martinez in game two. Three pitches hit by the Red Sox tonight against Brown. And every one of them trying to come inside with a fastball and leaving it down and in. Oh, well, here's here's Millar. It looked like a hanging cutter, just left it out over the plate. And this is a very similar to the pitch that Nixon hit out. Trying to come inside, low enough, these guys able to get the barrel of the bat on it. Cabrera on 3 0 is taking 3 and 1. After Bill Miller, Cabrera has the most at bats against Kevin Brown. He's 7 for 21 with one home run. He's had some success against Kevin. Full count. You can't help but think what might have happened to the Red Sox's first inning had Manny Ramirez not been thrown out at third base. That's at least. <laughs> It has to pass through about half the Fenway faithful's minds here tonight. Cabrera grounds to third. Alex Rodriguez a good play. That ball almost got over his glove. But he reached out to get it. Two out. And it'll be Damon.
balls hit that high, just have a taller third baseman down there. How about that for crack analysis? Very nice. Thank you. And happy birthday to you. <laughs> Damon is looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 9. Brown trying to keep the lead. Right side. Awful route. This game is tied. The throw to the plate too late. Not even close. And with that, Damon down to second as Cairo makes a mistake. It's 3 3. Outstanding base running by Johnny Damon. Off the end of the glove of Olrud. And Cairo, who was going to his left, had to retreat to his right. And sometimes you just have to concede a run. Miller with a good jump off of second base being waved home by Dale Swain. Outstanding base running by Johnny Damon. On that throw, he sees there's no cutoff, man. There can't be. Olrud was, was breaking toward the bag, and Damon ends up on second. Now a wild pitch ends up near the backstop, and Damon goes to third with two out. And here comes Mel Stottlemyre. Posada going off, going after that pitch. One-handed ball hits off the heel of the glove, a wild pitch, but a ball that Posada usually corrals. It looked like a split finger, and Posada, from the right-hander, he's anticipating a split finger going down and away from the left-hander. And if you saw that pitch, Kevin kind of hooked it, and it ended up looking like a slider. He sets up a way and throws it in the dirt inside. One ball, no strikes on Bellhorn, who drove home 82 runs during the regular season. Brown is trying to figure out any way he can to get out of this inning. He's given up three. Good fastball there. One ball, one strike. Kevin Brown, who after coming back from that broken left hand, the self-inflicted wound, couldn't get through the first inning here at Fenway Park. Went two-thirds of an inning, four runs, six hits. And an 11-4 loss on the 26th of September is having a rough second. It's two and two on Bellhorn. With this dramatically efficient lineup of the Red Sox, it's very unusual to have a guy who led the majors in strikeouts batting second. Bellhorn with 177 strikeouts on the year. Just got a piece. And Kevin Brown just called Posada out to talk. See Brown saying, my bad, my bad. So whatever just happened, Brown is taking responsibility, but the last pitch was fouled away by Bellhorn. Damon's hit is tied it. He's at third with two out and a 2-2 count on the Red Sox second baseman. Full count with Manny Ramirez on deck.
Ramirez now. The Red Sox thought there might have been something going on at Yankee Stadium with Pedro getting all these signs like an air traffic controller. There's nobody on at second base, and Posada's given signs like there is. I don't know whether it's common Kevin down or maybe they think you're getting something, but that's a little unusual when there isn't anybody at second base and he's given three and four signs. First and third, two out for Manny Ramirez. One of the most dangerous hitters in all of baseball. Hit over in 130 runs during the regular season, third best in the AL. Strike one. That's only the third batter. Kevin Brown has started with pitch one being a strike. And Javier Vasquez is getting loose for the Yankees in their bullpen. Stephen King into the fun here at Fenway. Hard hit. Jeter can't make a play. Safe. And the Red Sox have their first lead of this ALCS. We'll see how it's going to be scored. That was a tough play for Jeter, an in-between hop. I mean, that ball hit like a laser. Jeter recovering in time, but the backhand flip juggled by Cairo and Bellhorn safe. To me, that's a hit. And that's how they ruled it. Now it's Ortiz. Ball one. Now they've changed it to an error. Omar Vizquel must be the official scorer tonight. <laughs> <laughs> two on, two out, one ball, no strikes. Oh, vicious rip by Ortiz. Well, Al talked earlier about when you crowd a left-handed hitter, you have to crowd him on the hands. The ball down, you just drop the bat head on it. On the hands, Ortiz and a lot of left-handers have a tough time with that good. Ortiz, the ninth man to bat in this inning. It started with a walk to Veritek. Nixon a homer. Millar hit the ball to the wall in center. A double by Miller. Cabrera grounded out. A hit by Damon. A walk to Bellhorn. And then a smash to short ruled an error. And a ball hit by Ramirez. It's remarkable how many multi run innings start with a walk. Ball three. Damon giving himself a pedicure while the ALCS <laughs> is hanging on every pitch for the Red Sox. Three balls and a strike. That's one I that's a shot I have never seen in a major league dugout. Nor do we want to see it again. <laughs> the three one. Right side, Cairo. Knocks it down, good play. Picks it up, gets the out, and the inning is over. A four-run second for the Red Sox, and Fenway's alive. Tomorrow, NLCS Game 4, Cardinals and Astros with St. Louis up two games to one. And then game four here at Fenway Park. Right now the Yankees up two games to none. 
It all begins tomorrow at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific with the all-new Dodge Dakota pregame show. A big day in the New England area for Fox Sports with pregame show being here and the Seattle Seahawks taking on the New England Patriots. And that's going to get out of play and the count one ball one strike on Rodriguez who has an RBI double and a run scored tonight. We're in the third inning now and it's four three Boston a three run first for the Yankees a four run second for the Red Sox. With RBIs by Nixon and Damon. Misses two balls and a strike for Bronson Arroyo, who has new life. So unusual seeing Jimmy Johnson and Terry Bradshaw and Howie Long around the batting cage before the game. A lot of fun. They took it all in and had fun, and that's going to tie this game. A blast out on to Lansdowne Street off the bat of Rodriguez, who's two for two, and it's four four in the third. Not all breaking balls that are up are hangers. But folks, this is a major league hanging breaking ball. But not for long to A Rod. Hit a ton over the monster. Now it's Sheffield ball one. Fifth career postseason home run for Alex Rodriguez, who is now five of 11 in this series. Two and zero, oh, and whoever got that ball, or whoever had a ball, just fired it back over the green monster and onto the, the field out and left. That's an effort to throw one back. Ooh. Effort to throw it that high, right? Arroyo behind in the count, two and zero. Oh. Two and one. As we talked about early, and I know they showed it in our pregame show, Arroyo was the guy on the mound when Alex Rodriguez was hit here on July the 24th. It started that brawl. Veritek was right in the middle of it. We happen to be here and it was later in that game that Bill Miller took Mariano Rivera deep and out of the park in right center field to win the game for the Red Sox and many who follow this team regularly believe that this was the turning point of the season for Boston. Veritek, who's a leader on this team, took the fight to the Yankees in that case with the hand up into the face of Alex Rodriguez. Here's a 3 1 to Sheffield, a walk, and he's on with nobody out. And then on top of that, the Red Sox late in the day had to come from behind win. There's already action for the Red Sox out in their bullpen. It was that night. On the 24th of July, Bill Miller won the game off Rivera. Not every time when a pitching coach goes to the mound does he have something substantial to tell a pitcher. But it's pretty clear that Bronson Arroyo is getting under his breaking ball. That's the one Rodriguez hit and the one Sheffield foul back. Matsui hooks it foul. It's happened all night, Al. It's called flat. When a, when a pitcher's body rushes out before his body, his arm is in position to throw the ball, you are underneath it. Therefore, you're going to be elevated, and a lot of your pitchers are going to be up. I was I was intrigued a little bit. Veritek didn't go out. Dave Wallace, the pitching coach, went out. Usually when that happens, and Dave Wallace kept Veritek away, he's getting a little chew out there, that's for sure. Bad miss is away. One ball, one strike. He's got a quick delivery from not from the windup. He's usually about a one two to the plate. 
And in some instances, if your body's out in front, you're going to leave the ball up. On one and one, there's a strike. When you say one, two, you mean 1.2 seconds. And if there's one thing a first base coach and a bench coach are looking at is time from that set position to getting the ball to home plate. So there's double barrel action out of that bullpen. Vasquez for the Yankees, Mendoza, a former Yankee, for the Red Sox. And each starter could be out of here shortly. You, I guess, have to believe that Kevin Brown is finished. Yeah, and, and I think that's what Joe Torre would want to do with Vasquez. He's, used, he's a starter, so he's used to starting innings. You don't bring him in in the middle of an inning. That's not the case with Ramiro Mendoza, who is, by nature, a reliever. A homer, a walk, and now a 2 2 pitch to Matsui. Foul. And Arroyo hasn't fooled many. He's just way off with his command and location. And more than anything else, of course, it's all about runs, but if you're missing by a foot to two feet in your location, right there, Veritex set up away, and the ball was inside, you're off. You're either missing mentally, you're, you're a little bit lacking the confidence needed, or you're not quite comfortable with your delivery and what you're trying to do to get the hitter out. Another 2-2 to Matsui. Ball three. Full count. And we'll see what the Yankees do with Sheffield over at first. Oh, I think he'll be running. Matsui is not a guy who strikes out a lot. Sheffield with fair speed, that's not usually the determining thing. It's up to the hitter to make contact determine whether it's a strike or not and then make contact. Not going as Matsui hits it into the right field corner. Nixon will dig the ball out and Sheffield will hold it third. It's second and third with nobody out. Another extra base hit for Matsui and the Yankees are coming right back. And that's it for Bronson Arroyo. A homer a walk a double. And the right hander the Red Sox were so excited to get on the mound in this series against the Yankees has been KO'd in the third. Second and third, nobody out. Tie game. And Mendoza's coming in for Boston. Romero Mendoza, who was so good for so long for Joe Torre in a middle to shorter relief role, is on in relief of the right hander Arroyo who can only pitch into the third inning and with weather moving through the area and a little shower passing through Bernie Williams could put New York back on top runners at second and third nobody out a run already home here in the third inning. strike you look at the numbers for Matsui who just doubled to chase Bronson Arroyo and look at his numbers against the Boston Red Sox in 22 games of 386 average he had a two run homer in the first inning tonight he had five RBIs in game one one and two on Bernie Williams. Mendoza not a strikeout pitcher normally but he needs one here. If they strike out Williams perhaps the Red Sox can walk Posada and they get Ruben Sierra up there and try to get a double play ball out of him. Bernie just saw two nasty change ups going down and away. Trying to put New York back in front. That's in the air to shallow center field a base hit in to score is Sheffield. And New York is indeed back in the lead. It's now 5 4, first and third, still nobody out. Well, the third time was not a charm for Mendoza. Same pitch off the end of the bat, off the plate away. You talk about reach by Bernie Williams. That ball's four to six inches off the plate away. Fine piece of hitting by Williams. First and third, still nobody out. Mendoza 
who was a part of three American League Championship Series while with the Yankees. And three World Series in 98, 99, 2001 is pitching against the Yankees. First and third, nobody out, and New York on top 5 4. Posada takes a strike. So a four run second inning by the Red Sox got these fans back in it. But Bronson Arroyo could not do anything with a one run lead. It was almost as though Bernie Williams was looking for the pitch off the plate away. Watch his feet. One, two. Rarely you see that much foot movement on a hitter, but Bernie Williams certainly looking for that change up off the plate away. One ball, one strike. Which would make me think if uh, they actually either got the location or knew the sign, because you're absolutely right, Tim. He's moved up while Mendoza was in his windup. He was absolutely sure that ball was away. A 1 1. A strike. An 85 mile an hour pitch from Mendoza. It's 1 and 2. Mendoza was added to the roster for the Red Sox. They took Euclid off after the division series. The Red Sox right now have to be happy they did with what happened with Schilling and having to move low into the starting rotation potentially on Monday for game five. A 1 2 pitch. That's got to be a balk, doesn't it? Well, he stepped off. Now the umpires are saying that was a balk. If you step off, you can't go home. Mendoza immediately knew it, and now Francona is out to argue with Jim Joyce. He stepped off behind the rubber and threw a pitch. He just locked up. Maybe, maybe he could say, I was just asking to change the ball. <laughs> Watch him step off with his right foot. <laughs> and now throw. He's totally confused, but a balk called on Mendoza. Terry Francona's arguing, but he's not going to win that argument. I have never seen that. Neither have I. You can step off and throw to a base, but not home. That's just a brain cramp on the part of Mendoza. Because he certainly stepped off. It makes it a 6-4 game. And Francona is still doing all he can. Let's give you sounds of the game. The bench was yelling for the ball. Take it easy, guys. They got the call, and Francona still pleading. I think the ruling is once you step off, you can go to first, second, or third, but you can't go home. And that's why Terry Francona lost the argument. Not only does it produce a run for the Yankees, but if I'm Terry Francona, Dave Wallace, and the Red Sox, I'm thinking, What's going on out on the mound with somebody who would do that? Just locked up and commits the ball as Posada pops it up. On the infield, it's Millar for the first out. So a runner at second, one away, and the batter will be Ruben Sierra, who doubled his first time up. Crowd back out of it. Sierra tries to add to a two run Yankee lead.
All six runs charged to Arroyo as a wide strike is called on Sierra. You could even understand that move by Mendoza if they had if the Yankees had speed on the bases. Nobody out. Bernie Williams at first, not a base stealing threat. Nor Matsui at third base. What made him do it? I don't know. I, I think there had to have been some mix up with Veritek and Mendoza. And if you saw at the very end, before he stepped off, Veritek did that big jump, exaggerated jump, setting up outside. And I, he just had a brain cramp. The 1 1 is in the dirt. That movement is something we saw a lot of in games one and two. Late movement on the part of the catcher, Veritek. And now that counts two balls and a strike on Sierra. Mendoza misses with ball three. All right, let's see what Veritek's doing here. He's took a prolonged look in the dugout. He's given signs. This is a fastball away. Sierra swings and misses full count. I don't get it. I don't either. They brought Matsui home and put Bernie Williams in scoring position. And the pop up followed. And now it's a full count on Sierra. And Sierra strikes out, two down. Good change up out of the strike zone to get Ruben Sierra. So Sierra becomes the first strikeout victim tonight for the Yankees, and Olrude will hit. Looking for a two out RBI base hit to score Bernie Williams. Three in the first for the Yankees, now three here in the third, and they lead 6 4, strike one to Olrude. Vasquez getting ready to come into this game in the bottom of the third. Ball one to Olrud. When you think of postseason, it comes down to the team that executes the best. If you look at this game so far, you would hate to think that if the Red Sox were to lose this game, it's based on a balk and poor base running in the first inning. Both mental errors. A 1-1. One -one. Olrud checked it, two balls and a strike. Wind is really whipping around here at Fenway Park. The showers that were here a moment ago returned barely. And Les Canick is getting loose. Terry Francona does not have a deep bullpen tonight. Three and one on Olrud. Right now he's got Embry and Myers, the two lefties. He has Timlin, Les Canick, and Folk. Low is out of there. Wakefield was there the first two games, but he starts tomorrow. Mendoza's already been used. Here's a 3-1 to Olrud. Off the end of the bat. Tough play. Cabrera. Good play to end the inning. It's a 6-4 Yankee lead. Bottom of the third at Fenway. Tomorrow, J.B. Terry Howie and Jimmy are on the road. They're very close. In fact, they're all here at the park. They set up shop to broadcast America's number one pregame show live from Foxborough, home of the undefeated Patriots. Plus, Jimmy counts down his 10 greatest teams of all time. Plus, Ty Law will go 10 yards with TB. That's tomorrow, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, here on Fox. The new right-hander for the Yankees is Javier Vasquez. Brown, two innings, four runs, three earned, five hits, two walks, a strikeout, a home run. And here is Veritek, who started the four run second with a walk, dealing with Vasquez. Strike one. 
Javier Vasquez made the start and went through five innings in game four of the division series was hurt defensively in a ball that Sheffield lost the roof at the Metrodome as he misses low and away by and large didn't pitch poorly at all but in this LCS with Orlando Hernandez El Duque ready to go Vasquez in the bullpen and now very much in the middle of it all as he falls behind two and one and how about Wakefield tomorrow's starter at the Boston bullpen Terry Francona told us that Wakefield would not be in the bullpen so you wonder if he'll be starting tomorrow if he pitches tonight highly unusual or if he's moved Derek Lowe up to start tomorrow he could do that and start a guy like Schilling on Monday if it goes that far. Well Pickens. Yes it do. Two balls two strikes on Veritek leading off and a check swing he didn't go full count you see what broadcasters do up here outlier when you're down there pitching. I mean we've now figured out the next three starters for the Boston <laughs> Red Sox. You better go tell Frank Cota because I don't think he knows. <laughs> Three and two on Veritek. Nixon on deck and Veritek with a base hit to get the third inning started for Boston. Let's check in with Chris Myers. All right, thanks, Joe. We're in the uh, Green Monster in seats with tough guy Powie Long, who's not just here for the pregame show on Fox for the Patriots and Seahawks tomorrow. He's here, of course, as a lifelong Red Sox fan, born and raised in Boston, yeah. and. Uh, Seen a pretty good game tonight. Yeah, great game. It doesn't get any better than this. I think this is the greatest rivalry in sports, and I've been a lifelong Red Sox fan. I remember growing up as a kid watching the Red Sox on UHF Channel 38 with the little coat hanger, and I just don't think the Red Sox Yankee rivalry can be duplicated. It's it is as good as it gets. We're at Fenway. We're on the Green Monster. This is great. Well, of course, the Patriots are having all the success that the Red Sox have had problems with over the year. Derek Jeter, does he remind you anybody in the NFL? Yeah, you know, I, I, I think Tom Brady and Derek Jeter are the same kind of guy. You know, they, they don't put up great numbers. They just win championships. And I think Brady is a great example of poise under fire. And last week was a great example. Finds a way to win. Maybe didn't play his best game. Under 80 yards passing, but converted on two TDs. If you were talking to this the Red Sox team, I know you mingled with both sides before the game. Size up what you think will happen the rest of the series. Well, I saw Wakefield run out to the bullpen. Of course, we could throw him on on, on two consecutive days because he's a knuckleballer. I, and I know they've struggled with him. They gave up that one big home run last year, obviously. But uh, it doesn't get any better than this. I, I'm enjoying the evening. Bradshaw even enjoyed it here. Yeah, which, and he, he doesn't understand baseball, right? He doesn't know a thing about baseball, All but right. he, he definitely enjoyed it. All right, well, enjoy the rest of it. Good luck to your Red Sox. He'll be at Gillette Stadium with the uh, Fox NFL Sunday crew for the pregame with the uh, Seahawks against those streaking Patriots. Let's go back to Joe, Tim, and Al. All right, Chris, thank you. Grew up in Charlestown and grew up a Red Sox fan, Howie Long. The whole gang here, including JB, who was here earlier. Having fun at Fenway Park. Vasquez, only his second career relief appearance. And it happens right now. And a check swing foul by Trod Nixon. But just to talk about it again, I mean, now Liz Kanick is getting loose for the Red Sox in their bullpen. So they're rotating guys in out in that pen. But according to Terry Francona, Wakefield is not the kind of guy anymore this point in his career who even though he throws a knuckleball he believes could go on back to back days that was the story prior to game three yesterday for the rain out one two pitch Nixon strikes out one on one out Looks like a backdoor breaking ball What happens in particularly left handed hitters when they see the spin on a pitch like that they're accustomed to that spin bringing the ball inside when it stays away you almost have a flat footed swing at that ball outside fine pitch by Vasquez he stayed ahead the whole at bat unlike the Veritek at bat where he went three two Vasquez a fastball pitcher Veritek got a fastball base hit there he was ahead he got the breaking ball that's what exactly what pitchers try to do to hitters Millar falls ahead I should say Vasquez falls behind and the counts one ball no strikes Millar 
made a loud out his first time up as he by the ball out to the wall in center. That came after the two run home run by Nixon. Six four Yankees and that's a strike. With Millar flinching at the plate. If Millar is sitting on this this is what's called a hanger. It stayed enough inside. Now nah, that was a hanger. It was inside enough. But that ball's out a little further. Millar would hit it very hard. Off the end of the bat strike two. Vasquez was an all star this year in the American League. But really struggled in the second half. Point where people speculated there might be something wrong with his arm. He says there isn't. And Millar hits one to left. Green Monster off the middle of it. Veritek is going to third. The throw there too late. Down to second. Millar safe. Second that, and third one out. We have, we have seen a lot of mistakes made by both clubs. Matsui throwing to the wrong base. If he throws to second, you hold Millar to a single. Good base running by Veritek. Matsui not realizing who was running. Veritek is a fast catcher. One hands the ball. If he goes to second base, you at least hold Millar to a single and perhaps throw him out. We have seen some defensive snafus in this game. Now it's second and third one out and Bill Miller is at the plate. Six for New York third inning. Miller takes the ball. Could be a big play huge play. Any ground ball to the right side would get the Yankees out of this inning. Instead it puts the Red Sox at a six five. A one oh. Two balls, no strikes with Cabrera on deck. And here comes Mel Stottlemyer again. Kevin Millar who did a lot of his damage with a bat in his hands at home as opposed to on the road talks about the advantages how he lights it up so do his teammates here at Fenway this is your home batter's box I mean this is your music you're walking to the plate to this is your fans that are behind you it's just an electric atmosphere and you know and and the pitchers are going to make more mistakes when they're in trouble and they're in trouble a lot more here than they will be at their home stadium and I think when you get run, when you get pitchers in the stretch and you get that crowd noise getting up, boom, and now they hang a curveball. You know, now the fastball's down the middle instead of in or out. And look at the difference. Miller, the guy at the plate, 119 points better at home. Here's a 2-0. Miller, 3-0. See if Terry Francona gives Bill Miller the green light. There are some guys that just do not like to swing at 3-0 pitches. They become too anxious. 3-1. Not Miller. Good pitch to hit, too. American League pitchers try to pitch Bill Miller up in the strike zone. But if you're behind in the count, that changes everything. He could become more, much more selective. Bases loaded for Cabrera. So two hits and a walk in the first inning of work for Javier Vasquez, and now two former Montreal Expo teammates will square off. Vasquez representing the Yankees and Cabrera representing the Red Sox. 
Watching how sir, watching how Vasquez pitched that at bat with the open base and the left-handed Miller, and you have Cabrera as the right-hander. You have a force at every base, and you got the double play in order. So you have righty on righty with Vasquez with a very good breaking ball, and Cabrera who has a difficult time hitting the breaking ball. That was almost an unintentional walk. Bases loaded, one out. Six for Yankees. Strike one. Cabrera would love to have that pitch again. That was a straight change right down the middle. The Yankees got three in the first. Red Sox four in the second. The Yankees three in the top of this third. And a chance for Boston here in the bottom half. A wide strike and it's 0 2. Yankees get the call right here. You can see Posada setting up outside. And that pitch was outside. Big break for the Yankees. Big difference between 1 and 1 and 0 and 2. Huge. You can expand on two pitches with breaking balls in the dirt. Prior to Questech, John Hirschbeck, the home home plate umpire, was considered a pitcher's umpire. That one's too far outside. One ball, two strikes. Veritek, Millar, and Miller. Questech is a system that evaluates the home plate umpires on balls and strikes and basically puts parameters on it. They're in uh, 10 ballparks around baseball. The one two pitch Cabrera stays up there. Fenway being one of the ballparks. Orlando Cabrera the man who replaced Nomar Garcia Parra at short for Boston. Garcia Parra and the Cubs fell short. Cabrera and the Red Sox playing on. Foul and out of play. Cabrera and Vasquez, teammates in Montreal for several years, there's a little cat mouse game as to the thinking behind what Cabrera thinks Vasquez is going to throw. He was his shortstop for a few years in Montreal. Gary Sheffield properly shortening up in right field with Cabrera behind in the count. That's wide and at least corralled enough by Posada to keep Veritek at third. That ball was two and a half feet outside. Fine play by Posada. Backhanding it. How wide can you go? Actually, he didn't backhand it. Tough play, good play by Posada. Now it's two and two. From 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. It into right field. Sheffield was shallow. Has to go back and can't get it. Veritek scores. Millar's coming. So's Miller. Play at the plate. Safe and out. And it's a 6 6 game. Cabrera at third with two out. The reason Sheffield, number one, was playing shallow was because there were two strikes and Cabrera is having some feeble swings at Vasquez. 
but he threw him a fastball down the pipe. An outfielder can't control that. Retrieved by Bernie Williams, and a great relay by Miguel Cairo to get the second runner as the Red Sox tie it. Millar went back to second base to tag up, so he's late in sliding, and the second guy, Miller, is out. What a play. It's a two-run double, and Miller is out, 8-4-2. Go ahead, run at third, two out, and Damon, one ball, one strike. It is going to be a long night for the bullpens, and already the Yankees have Loiza getting loose in their bullpen. Two balls and a strike on Damon. Foul and that will get out of play. Two and two. So the Red Sox have lost a runner at third and now have lost one at the plate in the first three innings. Vasquez had to step off. Crowd wants a balk. They won't get it. Now a 2 2. Full count. There's a big difference in stepping off and not throwing home and stepping off and throwing home. <laughs> Mendoza guilty of the former. <laughs> Go ahead, run at third, two out. Damon to first. What a pickup by Olrud. And what a pickup by the Yankees to get Olrud. Vasquez gives up a couple. It's 6 6 after three in game three. The League Championship Series on Fox is brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. A chilly night at Fenway Park and Romero Mendoza is back out for more work. We're into the fourth inning of a 6-6 game. Cairo, Jeter, and Rodriguez will be the hitter. Cairo first up. Fouled out to first. Back in the second. And he's drilled to start the inning. So the Yankees again put their leadoff man on. We go back to that play at the plate. The double by Cabrera with the Red Sox trailing by two. Check Miller in the bottom of your screen looking at the ball as Kevin Millar goes back to tag up. Millar stumbling off second base. Miller slowed down. He broke stride. So Millar scores and Miller's thrown out. So after hitting Cairo, Mendoza's gone, and Les Canick will come out of the bullpen for the Red Sox here in the fourth. Curtis Les Canick is the third pitcher of the night for the Red Sox. Arroyo, Mendoza, now Les Canick. Mendoza goes an inning plus, one on, nobody out. And here's Jeter. Fights it off, strike one. This cannon came right after him. Jeter tonight over one with a walk and a run scored.
Almost got Jeter in the left hand. That's where American League pitchers try to pitch him. Up and in. Right on the plate. One ball, one strike. That's into right field. Nixon. Nice catch. One on, one out. Doug Minkiewicz is on the bench for the Red Sox wearing a microphone talking about Dale Swain, his third base coach, in a tough spot he was in last half inning. That's a tough spot to be in for, for Dale right there because you hold him up, Kevin might think he's talking about him, and then he got two guys standing there. Yeah, two guys standing We can't, yeah, you, you hold him up, and all of a sudden Kevin thinks he's holding him up, then we got two guys standing at third. Watch Miller looking at Sheffield. Millar going back to tag up. Miller delays. So by the time they get to third base, they are so close together that if you hold up one, the trail runner thinks you're holding up him too. As it stood, he waves Millar on. Millar scores. And Miller taking that sign. There's no way they're so close together. You can't wave one guy and stop the second one. Alex Rodriguez at the plate now, one on, one out. Rodriguez has had a big night already. 0 oh 2. Here's the tail end. You see how closely the runners are trailing one another. Millar scoring, and Posada with the play and a tag on Miller. What a goofy game. It really is. <laughs> 6-6 six, six score. The Yankees have had to use Brown, Vasquez, and they've had Loiza getting loose. The Red Sox, Arroyo, Mendoza, now Les Canick, and they've even had Wakefield up throwing. And now they have more action in their bullpen right now. And it's Tim Wakefield who's supposed to start tomorrow. The 0-2. One ball, two strikes. The one two pitch Rodriguez what a swing just to touch on it again if Wakefield is getting loose to come in this game potentially you can wipe him off the books you would have to believe for tomorrow then you think of a guy like Derek Lowe moving up a spot and if you wanted to you could have Pedro Martinez on regular rest pitch game five here on Monday or then it opens up the possibility again for Kurt Schilling if the Red Sox are willing to go that direction but according to Frank Kona the doctors still have to put Schilling through some tests to make sure he won't do further damage to that tendon two balls two strikes and Joe getting back to our opening I think if you're the Red Sox and Terry Francona you have to approach this game like game seven so far he is he gave Mendoza one chance in this inning the leadoff man got on and Mendoza's out. Jeter hit it hard but lined out to right and now it's a 2 2 count on Rodriguez. Now a full count with Sheffield on deck. The Yankees during the regular season won 101 games. Red Sox finished three games behind them with 98. They went face to face, head to head all year long, and here they are with the Yankees up two games to none in the ALCS. Trying to regain the lead here in game three. Cairo's running. Ball four is low, and it's two on with one out here in the fourth. Just under two hours old here at Fenway Park, and we've played. Only three and a third innings. Our game summary the Red Sox at one point had their first lead in this series in the second inning, but that quickly evaporated. Both starters didn't finish the third inning, and Matsui stays hot. Tonight, he's two for two with a two run homer, a double, and a run scored. 
Now it's two on with one out for Sheffield. Who's 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. Ball one outside. And yeah, not a good matchup for Lescanic. In lifetime, Sheffield is 471 with two home runs. Two on, one out, 1 0 pitch. Driven in the air to left field. That ball is up and out. Three run home run for Sheffield. And the Yankees are back on top. It's 9 6. So whoever Terry Francona points to and brings onto that mound for the Red Sox tonight, it isn't working. From Arroyo to Mendoza and now Les Canick. Falling behind in the count. And a letter high. It looked like a slider. Something away, a hanger. Man. This ball is crushed. A 9-6 New York lead thanks to this from Gary Sheffield. That's his second of the postseason. Now a strike to Matsui. One of the runs charged to Mendoza. The other two to Les Canick. The 0 1, Matsui takes the ball. Here's a 1 1, Matsui hits it down the left field line. That ball's going to fall in for a hit. Matsui will dig into second, and the Red Sox cannot figure out Hideki Matsui. A pair of doubles and a two run homer. Just a fastball up. It's on the outside corner, but it's high enough, and Hideki is a good enough hitter to stay on the ball just like he did there and drive it the other way. That's going to be it for Les Canick, and the guy who is scheduled to start tomorrow night's game. Wakefield is coming out of the bullpen. Les Canick has a rough first inning. It's 9 6 Yankees. Red. Bernie Williams, the first hitter to greet Tim Wakefield. And one pitch, a pop up over to the right side for Millar. Two out here in the fourth. Les Canick gives up the home run, then the double. He's pulled out. His reaction down in the dugout for the Red Sox trying to find somebody on the mound to get them some outs and Tim Wakefield has to get bumped up out of the bullpen tonight and Jorge Posada will be intentionally passed so an intentional pass to bring up Sierra. We talked to Terry Francona prior to last night's supposed game three start. We were rained out. We said, well, what about being at home? He said, well, the first thing is we get to bat last. That's good. And that statement was never more true than tonight with this back and forth that they've got going with the Yankees. The Yankees play keep away. The Red Sox had a short lived 4 3 lead. And now they'll be trailing by at least three when they bat in the bottom of this fourth inning. And it's imperative for Wakefield to go deeper in the game because of the Red Sox bullpen. They have four guys left. Two left handers Alan Embry Mike Myers who are both pitch for three to five outs and then Mike Timlin and Keith Folk who do about the same. And the point is we're only in the fourth inning. A strike hits the inside part to Sierra. Ruben has doubled and struck out. Bellhorn, Ramirez, and Ortiz will bat for the Red Sox in their half of this fourth. And Wakefield's trying to keep it 9 6. Knuckleball, really a misnomer. 
It's thrown with the fingertips. Here's an 0-2. Sierra three out of 14 this postseason. Looking for his second hit of the night. Eighth man to bat in the inning. One and two. The grip from Wakefield with that knuckleball. On one and two, Sierra hits it in the air to right center field. Nixon won't get it, and it gets past him to the wall. One run scores, that's Matsui. Posada coming all the way around. He'll score two more runs, and it's a five-run Yankee lead here in the fourth. A relentless attack by Joe Torre's New York Yankees. This game may never end. A rocket to right center. Ball down and in. Nixon running hard. Remember, he's had a quad injury. That had to slow him down somewhat. It skips by two-run score. And Sierra has a triple. Now Olrud lines out to short. And the inning is over. But not before the Yankees come up with five, 11 6, going to the bottom of the fourth. Bottom of the fourth inning in the two, three, and four hitters for Boston Bellhorn, Ramirez, and Ortiz against Vasquez. Vasquez came on last inning, gave up a couple, gave up a 6 4 lead. Now it's 9 6, now it's 11 6, a five run Yankee lead. 9-6 on the blast off the bat of Sheffield, a three-run shot. The Matsui doubled, a walk to Posada with two out, and a two-out, two-run triple by Sierra. Makes it 11-6. The Yankees leading in the fourth inning as Bellhorn takes ball one. Sierra tonight the DH making his first start two for three with a triple and a double. Bellhorn strikes out and that's the way the bottom of the fourth inning begins. Second strikeout for Vasquez and so far tonight. Three plus inning 17 runs 18 hits. 201 pitches six pitchers used four home runs in two hours ten minutes long. Welcome to the American League. It's that kind of night. And the Yankees are flexing their muscles here at Fenway. Now it's Manny Ramirez with one out. Strike one from Vasquez. There's another strike on a fastball at 0 2. Nothing wrong with the velocity from Javier Vasquez, 92 93 with a fastball. Yeah, you didn't know which team was going to do it, but Vasquez has come out and gone 0 2 on the first two hitters here in the fourth inning, really taking charge momentarily. Ramirez spoils the pitch while the Red Sox bat. Ron Jackson, who is the hitting coach for the Boston Red Sox, wants to send his best wishes to his wife Cheryl, who is down in Georgia in the hospital recovering from an accident. And Ron wants Cheryl to know that he is thinking about it as the Red Sox bat here in the fourth. Manny Ramirez with one out, nobody on. Takes ball one. Vasquez before the All-Star break was 10 and 5 with a 3.56 ERA. After he's 4 and 5 with a 6.92. He's been a bit of an enigma, mostly with his command. 
Ramirez stays up there. So far, the Yankees in the postseason since Joe Torre took over in '96, undefeated, 21 and 0 when they score seven or more runs. Ramirez again on one and two takes ball two. Ramirez is single and reached on an error. It was Javier Vasquez who started against the Boston Red Sox 22 games ago between these two teams on April 16th. Game Joe that you and I did prime time game. Right here at Fenway. Yep. Full count now on Ramirez. This is a good at bat for Manny. Laying off a good change up in the dirt and the fastball away that just missed. With one out, Ramirez pops it fouled out of the right side. Trying to get on in front of David Ortiz. For the first time in a long time, both bullpens are quiet. Ramirez really battling Vasquez. As Canick ended up going a third of an inning, three runs, two hits, a walk, no strikeouts. Boston fans need something to get their spirits up, and their hopes up again. Ramirez another foul when you have a five run cushion you could throw Manny Ramirez three two fastballs one after another that's a difference of having the lead and being behind Kurt Schilling Another foul. You can play Hit the Pros presented by the all new GMC Canyon and face real pitches from today's best hurlers. Log on to foxsports.com on MSN keyword games. GMC, we are professional grade. Javier Vasquez really having to work for the second out here in the fourth after striking out Bellhorn. To work some more. Tim talking before this game about the Red Sox having to look at game three down two games to none, like a game seven situation. Trailing by five here in the bottom of the fourth. 3-2 again and a walk and Manny Ramirez really earned that. Second walk handed out by Vasquez and just to repeat it has never happened. Seven game series in baseball history a team down three games to none. And that team coming back to win the series. And that's what the Red Sox are facing if they don't get something done here. The rest of game three and Stoudemire and Torrey have been talking a lot the first few innings. Talking again one on one out with Ortiz at the plate. That's down the left field line foul. 
and it gives you an idea of what it takes for a guy like Ortiz to shoot one out of here. Ahead, home run distance just sliced a little too far to the left. Right distance, wrong windage. 0 and 1. And just missed. Our camera person up there along the rooftop. That's Bob up there. Bob. Hi, Bob. Bob Tomaselli braving the elements. Vasquez on one and one Ortiz lays off two and one. Remember this is a Boston Red Sox team that trailed eight to nothing. We're having a perfect game thrown against them by Messina in game one at Yankee Stadium. They closed at one point down to eight seven. Two and two on Ortiz. They can score runs in bunches and they have at least what they want an opportunity to get something done against the middle relief of the Yankees. How about this infield configuration a rod the third baseman playing next to Jeter the hole is way down the third base side into the position one of the odder configurations on the infield that you'll see. Ortiz lines a base hit into right and the Red Sox making noise here in the fourth a walk and a single. And Jason Veritek who has had one big hit after another for the Red Sox stands in. We have seen that location to left handed hitters more tonight than you will see in a week during the regular season. That down and in fastball. And we've seen more of Mel Stottlemyre tonight than the Cardinals saw of him in the 64 World Series. <laughs> Three starts, three starts as a rookie. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so he's out to talk again. And now it's Tanyan Sturts getting loose. So with Sturts getting loose, it's two on, one out. And weeknights on FSN, it's the greatest nightly sports show on television. The best damn sports show, period. Next week is Decades Week with a look back at some of the greatest games and moments from the past 40 years. And former Lakers coach Phil Jackson talks about Shaq, Kobe, and his new book, plus much more. The best damn sports show, period, weeknights, only on FSN. Here is Jason Veritek. Veritek has walked and scored, singled and scored. During the regular season, hit 18 home runs. Has two in the postseason. Two and oh. That at bat by Manny Ramirez is the reason that Vasquez is in the trouble that he's in right now. It was a 13 pitch at bat. Great at bat by Manny. Veritek will be sitting on a pitch on 2 and 0. Oh. And he lines one to all Rood, and that is a double play to end the inning. A shattered bat line drive to all Rood, the tag for the double play, and we go to the fifth inning, game three. 11-6 New York back after this from your local Fox station. Cairo first up and he takes the ball low and away. We're only in the fifth. The Yankees lead by five. Trying to go up three games to none on Boston. One ball one strike on Cairo. 
Cairo was hit by a pitch last inning by Mendoza. With a score tied 6 6. Mendoza gave way to Leskanek, and Leskanek gave up a line drive out, a walk, a three run homer, a double. In the hole, Cabrera. Long throw. Great effort. Got him. What a play by Orlando Cabrera. That's as good as you'll see from any shortstop. Ranging far to his right. The leap, the one hopper to get Cairo. What a brilliant play by Cabrera. So Cairo is out, and here's Jeter. He led off with a walk against Arroyo and scored a run on an RBI double by Alex Rodriguez back in the first. Since then, he's fly to right and line to right. That's a strike. One ball, one strike. On the inside corner, one and two. Two and two. With one out, Jeter gets out of the way of ball three. Knuckleball dancing up and in to Derek Jeter. That's foul. There have been a lot of theories espoused in baseball about how to hit a knuckleball. I think of all the theories that I've heard, whether you catch it or hit it, wait as long as you can. Jeter waited long enough to watch it go wide for a one out walk. Baseball tomorrow it'll be NLCS game four and after the Houston Astros won today behind Roger Clemens Cardinals lead is now two games to one. That begins at four Eastern one Pacific following that the Yankees and Red Sox. And that begins with the all new Dodge Dakota pregame show. Here's Alex Rodriguez to check on the runner at first. Rodriguez has had a perfect night. An RBI double a run scored, a home run, which at the time tied the game at four. And then a walk and a run scored. Chased it. Strike one. Our Budweiser fantasy player is Roger Clemens and what he did today. Uh, against the St. Louis Cardinals seven innings four hits struck out seven. Log on to Fox on MSN keyword fantasy baseball tonight. This game is brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Oh and two on Rodriguez. Wakefield typically works with Mirabelli as his catcher now hooked up with Veritek. And you have to leave Veritek in the game because he's got the stronger bat. The 0-2. Veritek a good job to block that ball one. Nice play. Red Sox will have Nixon. There's Mirabelli. Nixon, Millar, and Miller. And they're half of the fifth. Uh, check on Jeter. 
A five run top of the fourth inning. And the Yankees now batting the fifth. Al, you would certainly know this better than either Joe or me, but I mean, here's uh, Tim Wakefield with the mindset of starting tomorrow night, and now all of a sudden, the Red Sox are in trouble, and here he is in the fourth inning, pitching. Well, well, like what you said, this is game seven for them. Rodriguez into right center field. That ball's going to get down and go all the way to the wall. Jeter will score easily. Damon gets it back in. It's another Yankee extra base hit. Another run. It's 12 6. For Rodriguez, his second double to go along with a home run and a walk. This is his slot at right center field. When he's hitting well, he can fill that gap with line drives. And he is hitting well tonight. Now he's at second one out for Sheffield. And Sheffield takes a strike. It is difficult to, to come in in a situation like that, knowing that he was supposed to start tomorrow. But I guarantee before the game, Terry Francona told him, you might be pitching tonight. Sheffield, last inning, took Les Canick out. Made it 9-6 with that three-run shot. Two more in the inning. Another run here in the fifth. And here's a 1-1. Just one line drive after another. One and two. Yankees have 11 hits on the night, nine for extra bases. What makes this a difficult assignment for Wakefield, with the score the way it is, hitters can be very relaxed. You were mentioning, Tim, about just stay back, stay as long as you can, wait. There's six runs up. You can't get any more relaxed than that. That's right. Two balls, two strikes with Matsui to follow. Relaxed in this game and two games up. On two and two, Sheffield lines one into left field. That ball's going to get to the wall. In to score is Rodriguez, down to second with another extra base hit is Gary Sheffield. And this is a nightmare. For the Red Sox and their fans, presented with it all, looking at a 3-0 deficit in this series, looking at the New York Yankees having all the fun in the first game of this series here at Fenway Park, and the hits just keep sailing out of this batter's box. One guy after another swinging from his heels for the Yankees. And a guy who has had a fantastic ALCS and Deki Matsui takes a strike. He's had a homer and two doubles. He scored three runs. The top of the order has done the bulk of the damage against the Red Sox pitching. Strike two on Matsui. Here we are in the fifth inning, and the two, three, and four slots for the Yankees have five doubles and three home runs. And only one time in all those at bats has there been an out. And that was Sheffield flying the ball to the wall in center field back in the first. One ball, two strikes on Matsui. Runner at second, one out. That's high. Two and two. A seven run Yankee lead. And a chance for more. Runner at second, Sheffield one out. And Matsui floats one into left field. Ramirez coming on. 
for out number two. Matsui retired for the first time tonight. The line score not pretty for the Red Sox for the hometown fans and now it's Bernie Williams. Williams with two out takes a strike Bernie Williams now in his LCS history has 27 career RBIs that ties David Justice 45 hits to tie Pete Rose 75 total bases ties George Brett that ball's foul and will get out of play. So a hit here and Bernie Williams would be the number one man in all three categories if Sheffield could score RBIs hits and total bases. And already we're only in the fifth the 10 extra base hits the 19 combined runs and every time a foul ball goes into the seats now these Red Sox fans are throwing it back onto the field. It's happened twice in this inning and we saw the home run hit by Sheffield say all sail all the way back onto the field the one by Rodriguez on the Lansdowne Street came back on. They don't want him. Here's the 0 2. Williams checked his swing he didn't go. One and two. Jason Veritek. Wanted this check swing, but it was pretty clear Williams did not go around. On one and two, Williams strikes out. And for the Yankees, they come up with two more in the fifth. Lead by seven. Millar will come up second in the bottom of the fifth for Boston. Stars of Arrested Development here at Fenway tonight. Jason Bateman, Will Arnett to his right, David Cross, two seats down to his right. And the Red Sox find themselves down by seven here in the bottom of the fifth inning. John Henry, who's the principal owner of this Boston Red Sox ball club, and Commissioner Bud Seelig. Watching as Nixon flies one into center field. One out here in the fifth. So Nixon is gone, and Kevin Millar, who's one for two tonight, will step in. Millar with a double, a run scored. When he doubled and scored back in the third inning. The Red Sox had come up with two in that frame to tie the game at six, but it's been all Yankees since then. Ball one to Millar. One ball, one strike. Miller will follow Vasquez trying to settle down got into trouble last inning but was helped out on a broken bat line drive into a double play off the bat of Veritek and what was then a five run game is now a seven run Yankee lead. Regardless of how it happened, we know how Manny Ramirez ran into the third out in the first inning. Then Bill Miller tagged out. Uh, bad base running or mistakes on the bases can put a tourniquet on an inning faster than anything. 
Two balls, two strikes. You think of the Red Sox in that third inning, instead of it being a tie game with runners on at second and third and one out, there were two outs and a runner on at third. Big, big difference. Plus, it just squelches a bigger inning. Still two and two on Millar. And on the other end of it for the Red Sox, who were down two games to none and seven runs in this game, you look at the starting pitching. Schilling went three innings, allowed six runs on six hits, injured in all in game one. Martinez turned in six innings, allowed three runs on four hits, but he was outpitched by Lieber in tonight's starter. Arroyo couldn't get an out in the third inning for Boston. Well, the same can be said for Kevin Brown, who only went two innings. Vasquez has been the only arm that Joe Torre has had to pull out of that Yankee bullpen. And while it hasn't always been pretty the last two innings, he's been able to make a big pitch when he's had to and get out of further damage. Here's a 2 2 to Millar. Popped up. Cairo is there. Four out number two. This Boston team, by the way, finished the regular season with a team ERA of 4.18. That was third best in the American League compared to the Yankees' sixth best, 4.69. But the pitching for the Red Sox has not been good any way you look at it so far in this ALCS. Then the question is, what about tomorrow? I guess the obvious answer would be Derek Lowe. And then who beyond that, if you even have to worry about that? Here's an 0 1. Miller hits a 2 hopper to Cairo, who backs up, and it's a 1 2 3 inning. What? For the first time all night. Sixth inning now, 13 6 New York. Tonight's game on Fox brought to you by the new Chevrolets. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months in American Revolution. By MasterCard, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And by AOL 9.0, now with top speed technology. Jorge Posada, who was walked intentionally back in the fourth by Wakefield to get to Sierra. He foiled that plan by hitting a two-out, two-run triple. Leads it off in the sixth inning, 13 to six Yankees in game three. Posada flies one to center. One out. Ruben Sierra is coming up and has his career taken him to many different places. I've been to Boston, Charleston, Dayton, Louisiana, Washington, Houston, Kingston, Texas, County Monterey, Faraday, Santa Fe, Tallapoosa, Glen Rock, Black Rock, Little Rock, Oskaloosa, Tennessee, Tennessee, Chicopee, Spirit Lake, Grand Lake, Devil's Lake, Crater Lake, the Beach Lake. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Across the desert, spare man. I breathe the mountain air, man. I've traveled and had my fear, man. I've been everywhere. Starting in Texas and at the moment winding back up with the New York Yankees. With one out nobody on a pitch from Wakefield is in 0 and 2. Prior to Sierra's hit last at bat he was one for 13. It was purely a matchup for Frank Kona. And in this case, the stats led to a two out, two run triple. That was when Posada was walked in the fourth. Wakefield pitched to Sierra, and he drove home two. One out, nobody on, one ball, two strikes. And Sierra hits it to deep left center field, back at the wall. It's Damon for out number two. Let's check in with Jeannie Zelasco for a game break. Well, this guy might look familiar. Roger Clemens, the story in Houston today. There's added pressure. I mean, uh, no different than uh, a few years ago when I had to do it in New York. Um, different situation here because this is my hometown. And another Cy Young contender of Royals. Walt tries to even up the series on Fox. It's an LCS doubleheader beginning at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. All right, Jeannie, thanks. 
We will have the nightcap tomorrow night between these two as Olrude lunges after a pitch and hits it foul down the left side. Strike one. If the Houston Astros can overcome the Cardinals being ahead in that series, what compelling stories. Whether uh, Roger Clemens faces the Yankees or the Boston Red Sox. With two out, nobody on. Olrude out of the way of ball one. Base is empty, two down. Olrude takes a strike. Two and two. The Red Sox in the bottom of the sixth will have Cabrera, Damon, Bellhorn. If anybody gets on, Manny Ramirez. What an incredible career for Roger Clemens. And Tim, in my opinion, he's the greatest pitcher in the game. The history of the game. Wow. Under the circumstances of pitching in this day and age with offensive ballparks. I got it, got it, got it, got it. Two chopper. Cabrera says, I got it. He waved off Bellhorn, and the inning is over, and Olrude comes up limping. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning 13 6, Yankees in front. Told you Olrud was limping after grounding out to end the top of the sixth inning. And after conferring with Joe Torre and one of the team's trainers, as you see him stumble out of the box, Olrud has come out of the game. Try to get a report on what happened exactly as Cabrera fouls it down the left side. That will get out of play. It'll be Cabrera, Damon, and Bellhorn for the Red Sox. Cabrera came up. With a two out, actually a one out, two run double. With the second out of the inning coming on the play at the plate when Miller was thrown out on a relay from Bernie Williams to Miguel Cairo to Jorge Posada. A time that tied the game 6 6, and Cabrera lines one into left center field. That ball's going all the way to the wall, and Cabrera's got a leadoff double. Fox sounds of the game and the discussion with John Olru. What happened? On the bat and the the bat. The bat. And it hit me right on the kicked it then, you kicked it. I think I let it go. It. It hit me in the sack. What do you think? So an issue with the bat. On his way out of the batter's box. And he came out of the game. Clark is in there. Here's Damon, top of the order for the Red Sox, and a pop up. Shallow right field. Sheffield. One on, one out. Let's go to Chris Myers. Chris? Well, uh, I'm, in the, uh, I'm in the seats with Stephen King, author, and uh, how horrifying is this for a Red Sox fan? Oh, you always ask me the same question. For a Red Sox fan, it's terrific just to be in the playoffs. And uh, this coming into this series, though, I'm sure you were a little bit more optimistic given the history and uh, how well guys like Kurt Schilling and Pedro Martinez pitched this year. Sure. Well, of course, the wild card that you never know what's going to happen when somebody's injured. And I think that what we saw happen this year was the injury to Kurt Schilling was like the first domino. And it put a, a, a strain on the pitching staff that we didn't expect. And uh, it's changed things since then. So that it's it, there's been a little more adversity, let's put it that way. If you were writing about this game tonight, what would you write? What I'd write is a uh, probably a seven-run rally in the bottom of the ninth, ending with a walk-off David Ortiz home run. That's how I'd write it. All right, optimistic. Now, you have a book that's because out. Because I believe in suspense, but I also believe in happy endings. Yeah, and maybe not reality, though, right? Well, I mean, I think that uh, the Red Sox are America's team in a way. And, of course, one of the things that I believe in very strongly is that one of the reasons that the Red Sox are America's team, for instance, you take the Phillies. When they finally won the World Series, they were just another baseball team. 
All right, real quick, I think the Yankees would argue with that. Do you have a book that's coming out and a book that's out? I have a book that's out now called The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. Uh, it was done as an adult book now. It's a children's pop-up. And in the, the world of literature, Tom Gordon's always a Red Sox player. All right, and the book due out at the end of the uh, 2004 season, about the 2004 season. Yeah, that's called Faithful with Stuart O'Neill. Okay, thanks, Stephen. And hang in there, right? Okay, yeah, always. I right, appreciate that, Joe. All right, thanks, Chris, as Bellhorn strikes out. There's Tom Gordon. This crowd gets on Bellhorn. Chris better watch himself, man. That was an antagonistic <laughs> Stephen King coming back at him. <laughs> Might find himself in one of those novels or some sort of spell being put on him before the end of the night. <laughs> Runner at second, two out, and Manny Ramirez is at the plate. You said uh, a moment ago, right before we went to break, Al, about Roger Clemens and your claim that he's the best pitcher ever in the history of this game. We ran out of time and we may very well run out of time here, but Shocker. knock us out. Why do you think so? As Ramirez with a runner at second, takes the ball. Since the inception of the designated hitter, the, the mound in 67 went from 15 inches to 10 inches. We have ballparks now that are built. Bring the fences in. It's conducive for hitters. Hitters are stronger, much stronger. As a result of that, the, the home plate strike zone is a little bit smaller. It's geared for more offense, and you see what Roger Clemens is able to do in these recent years. I put him as the greatest pitcher. Six Cy Youngs and all of the other accolades. Two balls, no strikes. Actually now one and one, as they called that a wide strike on Ramirez. Runner at second, two out. Tim, are you throwing in with that? Well, I mean, uh, Al makes a compelling case. Manny Ramirez waiting for a 1-1 delivery. On the outside corner, strike two. We have seen some de deplorable pitching this evening. And if there's one thing that baseball, in my opinion, should do to equal things out and to bring baseball back to a more balanced game, it would be to raise the pitcher's mound from 10 to 15 inches. Go all the way back to 15 inches. I think so. Well, Tim, that's a start. <laughs> <laughs> you might get another three years out of your career, Al. One and two is a count on Ramirez with a runner at second, two out. Well, the ineffectiveness, that's how it started. My biggest problem of all is to call, not calling it the high strike. There's not enough high strikes being called. Plate coverage, high strikes. Ramirez, two balls, two strikes. How many highlights do you see where guys hit the ball higher than the, the, a strike that should be called? Hit it hard, out of, out of the park, off the wall. Well-struck balls. Crediting hitters for not swinging at balls they should hit hard. That they do hit hard. That 1-1 one, one count. Pitch a little above the belt, right down the middle. It's not always called a strike. You caught plenty of those as strikes. Two balls, two strikes here on Ramirez. I think it was Jim Palmer who said the strike zone was called then the way it is now. I wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. No. Because of that very area around the plate, the high strike. Yeah, gentlemen, Jim had to have the high strike to be effective. Still two and two. While Posada goes out to chat with Vasquez, we'll give you our web MD symptom checker. Focuses on Orlando Hernandez. Tired pitching shoulder, but good enough to make the start tomorrow. Check your own symptoms with WebMD's symptom checker at WebMD.com. strikes out and the inning is over so a leadoff double by Cabrera he never moved we go into the seventh back after this from your local Fox station Tim Wakefield is back for another inning seventh inning Cairo leads it off and hits the first pitch into the hole Cabrera trying to do it again this time too late 
great effort. And Orlando Cabrera is showing all he can do tonight. Still having fun down by seven. Miguel Cairo hits an almost identical ball to Cabrera, who makes an almost identical play to it bats in a row. One an infield hit, the next to. Oh, the first one a 6 3, the next one an infield hit. Now it's Jeter, who does not have a hit tonight. With all of the hits put up by the Yankees, 13, 13 runs on 13 hits. Jeter's 0 for 2 with a pair of walks. We'll talk about tomorrow night. Derek Lowe, he would appear, and we've touched on this before, but it appears now that Derek Lowe would be the logical choice to start game four against Orlando Hernandez. And when you listen to Lowe, heard him react when somebody asked him about the injury to Schilling and now he could go back in the rotation as Jeter flies one into left center. Nice catch by Damon. One on one out. He said well obviously they didn't think I was good enough the first time around to put into the starting rotation. So there's a little chip there on his shoulder and I think there's something it's obviously weighing on him and it'll be interesting to see how he comes out of the gate here tomorrow night. He's been much better at home and we're obviously just guessing that he'll be the guy but eight and four at home this year six and eight on the road and he's really about all Terry Francona has left. I was I was thinking the same thing. I mean there is no one else but Derek Lowe for tomorrow night's game to start. Well, Nobody if he, if he feels that way he certainly has an opportunity to really show some people. He'll be a free agent at the end of the year. So not only an opportunity to show the Red Sox but the rest of baseball what he can do it would seem with his team facing a three games to nothing deficit to the Yankees and as Alan Embry starts to loosen. Runner at first one out. Alex Rodriguez perfect night at the plate off the end of the bat shallow center bell horn out drops it but they'll get the force at second two out four six on the force out that's an understandable force out as bell horn drops the ball Cairo was headed back toward first base. So by the time he stopped, regained his momentum and went towards second, it was too late. Bellhorn drops the ball right there, skidding his Cairo, and an easy force play. So two out in the inning for Sheffield. Sheffield tonight is flat out walk score hit a three run home run and an RBI double. 0 and 2. We talked about the potential matchup of Roger Clemens and his Astros against the Yankees or the Red Sox. And then you start thinking back to the 60s and matchups that the St. Louis Cardinals had with Boston and New York. We give you our Nissan game summary as we play here in the seventh inning top half Red Sox 13 runs allowed the most in postseason franchise history. A Rod has scored four runs ties an LCS record. Bernie Williams continues to pile up all these LCS marks. And that bottom note probably the most important is what we came on the air talking about no team has ever come back down three games to none best of seven series in the history of baseball to win the series. You're not going to have much of a chance Arroyo threw 60 pitches and when the Yankees swung the bat they didn't miss one. That's grounded foul. Whether a foul ball or putting it in play. He didn't have one swing and a miss. It's amazing and he lasted only into the third inning. We had this at the beginning. In Major League Baseball history, 
It's happened 25 times in postseason when a team's been down three games to nothing. The NBA 73 times. Only in the NHL in 1942 and in 1975 have teams down three games to nothing come back to win the best four or seven series. That's in the seven game series in the best of five series. You only have to think back to last year for the Red Sox who were down 2-0 to Oakland came back one three straight moved on for the seven game ALCS against the Yankees as Sheffield hits another over half the way up the green monster and it's a long single first and third two out. Red Sox were down 2-0 to Cleveland in 99 came back. As you look at. The replay of that line drive by Sheffield. Then think about the Mets in 1986 in the World Series were down 0-2 had lost the first two games at home. And then came back. As everybody knows to win that. World Series over Boston Terry Francona. Is going to take the ball from Wakefield. Handed to Embry with Matsui coming up. Save one for me. Fox. That last big swing by Gary Sheffield could be the knockout blow in this game three. The three run shot as Embry misses wide to Hideki Matsui here in the seventh with first and third two out. Came in the fourth inning. Came off Curtis Leskanik. And that took it from a 6 6 game to 9 6. It's now 13 to 6. First and third two out Matsui grounds one up the middle another hit for Matsui and Sheffield will end up at third as Rodriguez comes home to score. Matsui is unbelievable. That's his fourth hit. He's got three more RBIs tonight and eight in the three games played in this series. And the Red Sox just cannot find a way to get Hideki Matsui out. Now it's first and third two out for Bernie Williams. You remember halfway through his first season. George Steinbrenner was highly critical of Hideki Matsui. He was not hitting home runs. Swinging and missing a lot. Had some comments that he made and according to Joe Torre. He said you could tell how mature Matsui was it had bothered him. It embarrassed him a little bit. And it was right after that around the All Star break last year that Matsui got hot. And he's really been hot since. With two out Williams takes ball one. He has rock star status in Japan. A mega star and the Yankees found that out this year. When they opened the season in Tokyo. They played two games against the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. And Joe Torre has said that he has never seen anything like the popularity of Matsui in Japan. And I know as uh, many of the teammates of his, he's tried to speak English as best he could. He's, he's very affable. He's smiling. He's friendly. I know he's embraced New York. He's helped uh, NYC and company as the tourism arm for New York City to increase the tourism from Japan. He's been a great guy on and off the field. Here's a 2 1 pitch Williams 2 and 2. Japanese broadcasters and the media trailing literally his every move and it's been that way since he got to the Yankees but he doesn't fight it and as you said he shows up at the park with a big smile on his face and teammates love to kid him and he loves being around this Yankee ball club. They're loving everything he's doing in this ALCS. The only guy right now that's any hotter, and the guy that I guess we keep passing over, is Sheffield. I mean, you looked at the averages in this LCS. You think about the five RBIs in game one for Matsui, but Sheffield, every night he's got at least three hits. Sheffield. 
Sheffield with three hits tonight and a walk. Here's a 3 2 pitch. Matsui will go. Bernie Williams hits it in the air to center. Back is Damon. Still going back. At the wall. Can't get it. Two runs will score, and Bernie Williams now is number one in LCS history. In the RBI department, in the hits department, and in the total bases department all by himself with that one swing. That thing just kept carrying the center field, and Johnny Damon never got there. Two more runs. Normally, an outfielder will run to the spot where he thinks the ball is going to come down. Damon drifted on that ball and drifted and drifted until by the time he got there, he had to fight the wall and the ball. That's now five runs charged tonight to Wakefield. The Yankees offense this series. A 363 batting average during the regular season they hit 268 that was only good for eighth in the American League. It set a club home run record with 242. Tied him with the White Sox atop the AL this year. Everybody knew this was a good lineup but they have never clicked like this. I guess they picked a pretty good time to click. Yeah. And the Red Sox have felt the pain of that. 2 0 the count, runner at second, two out. So Alan Embry has come in, face Matsui, giving up an RBI hit. And now a two out, two run double to Bernie Williams. Two and one. An LCS record 16 runs tonight for the Yankees. They've only gone in order once and they've only been held scoreless in two half innings. As Posada hits one to deep left center field. Off the green monster another run it's another double in to score is Bernie Williams. And it's 17 to 6 Yankees. A route of epic proportions here at Fenway Park. And the reaction from that fan is that ball heads off the green monster. Let's find Stephen King now. <laughs> The runner at second, two out, and Alan Embry has run into three hits. And Stephen King is a diehard Red Sox fan. He's going to hang in there till the end. It's 17 to six, and Ruben Sierra has another shot at it. Two out of four tonight. The eighth man to bat in this inning. Now Mike Myers has to get loose for the Red Sox in their bullpen. Sierra takes a strike. Pitching is all about executing quality pitches consecutively and that is location and movement and exploiting a hitter's weakness. Sierra grounds on two hops to Cabrera. And the inning is over. But more damage done. A four run seventh inning to make it 17 to 6 Yankees. And we will stay here for God Bless America. Sergeant Dan Clark of the Massachusetts State Police will perform here this evening. Across the globe, we welcome Massachusetts State Trooper Sergeant Dan Clark, who will lead us in this evening's presentation of God Bless America to be followed 
by our Fenway Park organist playing Take Me Out to the ball game. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my own sweet home. God bless America, my Championship Series on Fox is brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealer by IBM making on-demand business a reality for companies around the world and by AmeriQuest Mortgage the company that knows you are more. Sergeant Dan Clark with a great rendition of God Bless America as we move into the bottom of the seventh inning and Boston bats David Ortiz first up. Vasquez has pitched well after initially allowing the two runs on three hits in the third. He's really settled down. Ortiz, Veritek, and Nixon. An 11 run Yankee lead. That'll get out of play. One ball, one strike. Kevin Brown went two innings. Vasquez is taking care of the rest. And Ortiz hits it down the left field line. That ball won't be caught. It's off the wall. And Ortiz, with Matsui playing it perfectly, is held to a single. Even when David Ortiz is overpowered, he can overpower the ball. That fastball almost binds. And a fastball hit the other way. Veritek now. Jason has a hit tonight, four of nine in this series. He and Ortiz have hit throughout. Ortiz, by the way, now three out of four with three singles. Jack trying to reach for the third time tonight. He's walked and scored, singled and scored, and lined into a double play. That was Vasquez's 96th pitch. Quantrill getting loose for New York. A guy who was making only his second big league relief appearance, Javier Vasquez, who had plenty of time to get loose while the Yankees were batting in the third inning. He's basically thrown like he would in a start right around the 100 pitch mark as he brings home a 1 1 delivery. That is smashed into center field. Back at the wall, it's gone. Home run, Veritek. His second of this ALCS to make it 17 8. Good point. 
parts of the bats on both sides are going to be checked for dents. You wonder if Ortiz hurt himself on that swing. And I know he didn't run hard going around the bases, but he held his side and is touching his back as he goes back into the dugout for the Red Sox. And now talks with a trainer. As Nixon takes a ball in the dirt. It's funny, this is not the type of swing that you would hurt yourself. You could see it if you fouled it back. That certainly uh, might be the case. Usually if you make contact like that, you don't injure anything, but fouling a ball back or hitting it off the end of the bat, breaking your bat. Jason Veritek getting all of that pitch. So fastball away, up out over the plate. Count's gone to 2 0 now on Nixon. And if for no other reason, maybe not because of the scoreboard, but because of pitch count and extending Vasquez, he may be nearing the end of his night with Quantrill. About ready in the Yankee pen. Two and one now on Nixon. Nixon takes just low. Three and one. We also don't know whether it was a pre existing injury or some nagging feeling he's had. Could have been, yeah. He's a DH, so he can go back in the clubhouse, go in the trainer's room. Maybe he can have an x ray if he wants to go to the hospital. He can go down the street. Whirlpool. Whirlpool. Jacuzzi. Whatever he wants. Take a nap. Take a nap. It's been known to happen. Not by him necessarily, but by others. Eat sandwiches. 3 2 pitch. Nixon flies one into right for Sheffield. Out number one. The bottom of the seventh. Let's say hi again to Jeannie with a game break. Hello, more from the NLCS, a.k.a. Home Run Derby. Carlos Beltran leading the world right now. This is seventh home run of the playoffs, one short of tying the record. More Beltran in game four tomorrow. Astros Cardinals start the LCS doubleheader. Of course, everyone's a buzz because of a great sports Sunday on Fox. America's number one pregame show live from Foxborough kicks off the day. It all begins tomorrow, noon Eastern at 9 a.m. Pacific. All right, Jeannie, thank you. So Javier Vasquez should be proud of the job he turned in tonight. He corralled it, brought it back within reason for the Yankee pitching. He exits here in the seventh. First pitch from Quantrill is a strike on the outside corner to Kevin Millar. One out of the inning, two runs home on the home run by Veritek. Millar is one for three. Numbers for Quantrill. We're at a rough stretch drive for the Yankees after being so busy in the first half. Started the season with a brace on his right knee after colliding with Alex Rodriguez in the game over in Japan. That ball is foul. Strike two on Millar. The brace is gone, so at least his knee is more sound. But his numbers have fallen off in the second half. One out, nobody on, a 1 2 pitch, Millar. 2 and 2. Janian Sturts getting loose, 2 2 pitch. Tough play for Jeter makes it look easy. Two outs. And with the bases empty, Bill Miller will be the hitter. 
All of us at Fox Sports want to send along our condolences and our prayers to Larry Lancaster, one of our baseball producers during the regular season, and our associate director during the World Series. Larry's mother passed away this week, and so from all of us, miss having Larry around, we're thinking of you. And a real hard worker at Fox, so sad news for the Lancaster family. Strike one on Miller. Left field umpire Randy Marsh going over and giving the ball to the proper guy. I mean, that hurt. The foul ball twisting into his hands. He earned that one right there. Said, got a bone bruise and a ball. Pitches in the dirt. One ball, one strike. One more look. Ouch. <laughs> the guy in the green top and the blue Red Sox hat. Really owes that guy. Right. That slap down into the left field corner off the bat of Miller. Matsui is playing left field extremely well. Dealing with that corner and with the green monster. Gets it right back in. It's a two out single. Matsui corralling that first ball hit by David Ortiz, and now he holds Bill Miller. To a single. So now with two out and a runner at first, Miller. Here's Cabrera, who's had a pair of doubles, two RBIs tonight for Boston, takes a strike. Also made. One eye popping play to his right in the hole to rob Cairo of a hit in the middle innings. Bottom of the seventh, 17 to 8, the Yankees out in front. One ball, one strike. On the outside corners, strike two. Score of the football game tomorrow will probably be five to three. And it should be a great matchup at Foxborough with winners of 19 straight, the New England Patriots taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Two teams with Good defenses, it might be. <laughs> Football score in the wrong game. Here's a one two pitch. Cabrera lines one into center field for another hit, his third of the night. And it's two on with two out. Johnny Damon will be the hitter. To left the slider up out over the plate. He's hitting over 500 against Quantrill. Many instances when you have matchups, Cabrera was over 500 against Quantrill, and there's a psychological edge to these battles. And here he leaves a 1 2 slider right there for him to hit up the middle like that. And here comes Mel Stottlemyre again, this time to talk to Quantrill. Four hits in this inning. It's Johnny Damon, the man at the plate. Johnny has one hit tonight. A little weekend in New England for Fox Sports. Barry. Time in New England took me away. We started a story whose end must not. Our weekend schedule in New England. NFL pregame show, live noon Eastern, live from Foxborough, Seahawks and Patriots, Yankees and Red Sox after the Cardinals and Astros in Houston. And it's those slow motion shots of Bradshaw giggling with just 
<laughs> can make you weep in the seventh inning of a 17 to 8 game. 31 combined hits, a new LCS record. A foul tip. Makes it 0 and 2 on Damon. Matchups for Quattro aren't very good against this Red Sox lineup. Damon is 412. Cabrera was over 583. Mears 321. Pilar 667. That's why Sturtz has been up since Quattro came in, and now Gordon has to get loose. Just sticking the bat out and poking it into left and into the glove of Matsui is Damon. And we go into the eighth inning. Damon makes it out 17 to 8 into the eighth inning. There you go. Another pitcher for the Red Sox, Mike Myers. The left hander. And strike one. It's Myers in relief of Embry, who took over for Wakefield, who relieved Les Canick, who picked up Mendoza, who came in in the third inning for Arroyo. Inside from Myers, new battery altogether as Doug Mirabelli takes over behind the plate. We're in the eighth inning. It's 17 to 8. And a strike on the outside corner. 25 runs scored tonight, and one has been unearned. That didn't have to be. It was a tough error on Jeter. That was disputable, right? That was on a rocket hit by Ramirez back in the second. Bottom two in the order. This is the first at bat for Clark since taking over for Olrud, who had a leg injury, had to leave in the sixth. That's over but low, two and two. Mike Myers is more the typical situational left hander. Tough on left handed hitters. 2 2 pitch. And gets Clark here, the switch hitting first baseman, one out. And with the bases empty, Cairo, who has a hit tonight, one for three with two runs scored, walks in. It's October in the Major League Baseball postseason, coming down to the wire. Every game, every inning, every play counts. Watch the World Series on Fox. Starting October 23rd. Don't miss it. Here's Cairo. Ball one. Cairo two out of nine in this series. One ball, one strike. Well, if you're on the Red Sox, you can look at it either in a half empty glass or full. Say uh, it's never been done, so we might as well just uh, fold up the tents and not show up tomorrow, or break the game down into its smallest form. And that's to continue to execute. Everybody's got a job. Go out tomorrow, play the way you know you need to play to be the best player you can. And collectively, on a 25 man unit, you try to win tomorrow's game. Don't believe the numbers. If not, don't show up. Three balls and a strike. And that's about as simple as it gets and that's going to face the Red Sox and that guy on the right Derek Lowe who you have to assume will be the starter for Boston tomorrow night full count on Cairo I know you've been in uh, situations like that before Al but I mean you got to be a little apprehensive the way the Yankees are, are swinging the bats tonight 17 runs 17 hits. 3 2 pitch. Cairo 2 out. Cairo is down on strikes. And with the bases empty, back to the top, Jeter. Good cut to basketball running in on Cairo. Well, again, you, it, it's, it sounds kind of cliche, but you control what you can control. And everybody, you got to show up tomorrow. It'll be a packed house, albeit a, everyone will be somewhat subdued and upset about what's gone on here. 
but you got to break your game down to your ABCs, your one, two, three, whatever that is. And go out and execute, perform. Don't think of, uh, we're down 0-3 and we have to win four in a row. I'm almost certain that the Boston Red Sox won four games in a row this year. Oh, yeah. And I guarantee you tonight, and the memory of a 17-run, 17-hit attack, which is where it stands right now, will evaporate if Lowe turns in a good start and these Red Sox get off to a fast start tomorrow and then everybody around here will start thinking well four in a row never been done but why not Jeter steps out the crowd reaction was for Rodriguez who got that last foul from Jeter and instead of flipping it into the seats rolled it back to the Yankee dugout one ball two strikes on Jeter. Myers in a spot here where he can strike out the side in the eighth. Two and two. Before this series started last Tuesday, the Boston Red Sox were favored to beat the New York Yankees in this series. With two out, nobody on. Cheater stays up there. And then. Who would have known that the ankle situation for Kurt Schilling was as serious as it was going into game one. And according to Frank Kona I think they now understand that it was probably worse and Schilling was less inclined to tell them how bad that ankle felt. Right. And then the results were what they were and the evidence was made it clear that there was something seriously wrong with that ankle and the problem with the rest of the series is they have to wonder about that tendon being over the bone stretched out and if it should rupture for a guy who's in his late 30s you're looking at a serious situation a guy they want to have around beyond 2004 so if they can find a way to stabilize it this is all according to Terry Francona who we talked with before the game they can find a way to stabilize it they can find a way to believe that that thing is not going to rupture then they will if Schilling feels up to it run him back out there at some point if they get the chance but right now that's so far down the road all they have to worry about right now is Derek Lowe in game four tomorrow night against El Duque out at second is Jeter as Cabrera got his right foot on the bag and we go to the bottom of the eighth. We came on the air with Keep the Faith around here. They're trying. The League Championship Series on Fox brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. By Sharp. Sharp Aquos. Suddenly, there's more to see. And by Papa John's Pizza. Better ingredients, better pizza. Bottom of the eighth inning here at Fenway Park. Two, three, and four hitters for Boston. And Bellhorn, who has struck out three times tonight, takes a ball from Quantrill. Bellhorn, Ramirez, and then Ortiz. He was in the dugout with his batting helmet on and a bat ready to go, even though after that last single, Trotting around the bases on the home run by Veritek. Looked like he may have tweaked his back. 1-1 one, one pitch. Strike two on Bellhorn. It just moved past midnight. Here at Fenway Park. And the LCS records tonight. Rodriguez with the five runs. 17 runs for the Yankees. Combined hits 32 and combined runs of 25. And Bernie Williams moved to the top of the LCS leaderboard. Career LCS hits, RBIs, and total bases with his night. Here's a 1 2 pitch. Bellhorn strikes out again. Four strikeouts and a walk tonight for Bellhorn.
Joe Torrey's Yankees tonight 17 runs. The points would have outscored seven NFL teams last weekend. <laughs> that is a great note with one out. Ball one down and away to Manny Ramirez. Ramirez is a hit. He's reached on an error, walked, and struck out. Made a base running mistake back in the first. One ball, one strike. You know, Joe, uh, baseball players and baseball teams have ways of rationalizing games like this during the season when you can compare it to one game over 162 games. But when it's the best four out of seven, it's very difficult to rationalize it because it's one game out of a necessary four games to win. Here's a 1-1. Ramirez flies one into center for Williams. Two out. For the Reds fan, Red Sox fans, they need someone to lean on. I just might have a problem. Opportunity tomorrow night in game four. We assume behind low against El Duque, Orlando Hernandez, as Ortiz takes a strike. The Sox will lean on low. As we mentioned, Derek Lowe, eight and four here at Fenway this season, with a four and a half ERA compared to six and eight in the area over six on the road. Should they get past the game four is Timlin. He's one of two remaining in the bullpen for the Red Sox. The Red Sox may be forced to bring back Pedro Martinez on regular rest as opposed to what they wanted to do, which was give him an extra day's rest, where his numbers are so much better for a game six in New York, but that's way in the distance. Two out bases empty one ball one strike on Ortiz. Take a look at the numbers for Pedro Martinez. On regular rest compared to extra rest. A 2.98 ERA compared to 4.77. That's this season. And that's why Terry Francona was hoping to be in a position to push him back to game six in New York with an extra day. Doesn't look like at this point that will be an option. Here's a one two to Ortiz. And a one two three inning for Quantrill. We go to the ninth inning. Yankees final at bat. Up by nine. Top of the ninth inning, heart of the order for the Yankees. That means Sheffield, Matsui, and Bernie Williams. A 17 to 8 Yankee lead. And Mike Myers, who struck out two, allowed a hit in the eighth, is back for the ninth. Breaking ball in for a strike. Yankee fans are rubbing it in and that's a recipe for trouble here at Fenway Park a base hit up the middle off the bat of Sheffield. He is unconscious. He is four for his last four. He's four for five on the night. He's hit a three run home run and that is tonight's play of the game. It's brought to you by Sharp Aquos liquid crystal television. There's always more to see. That one got up into the new seats on top of the green monster. Made it 9 6. The Yankees rolled from that point on. Pinch runner will come in for Sheffield. What a night for Gary Sheffield. Bubba Crosby is off the bench to do the running. Strike one to Matsui. 
both Sheffield and Matsui a triple shy of the cycle. Matsui drove in the first run of this ALCS. And he hasn't slowed down since. That's into right center field, well hit. Back is Nixon at the wall, another home run for Matsui. An unbelievable display by the three and four hitters for the Yankees. Matsui with a pair of home runs, a pair of doubles, plus an RBI single. And you cannot get any hotter than Sheffield and Matsui. What a combination against this Red Sox pitcher. My God. Just staggering. And his last two hits have been off lefties, Embry and now Myers. A ball outside to Bernie Williams. Hitting this ball a ton to right center field. Oof. Ground ball up the middle, another hit. And now Myers has got that look on his face, and with now it's just Folk, I believe. It was Timlin and Folk. Now I believe it's only Folk. And it is getting loose. They're going to buy some time, maybe get Myers out of there. As soon as they put 20 hits up, this is not time lapse photography. This is just moments ago. Put another one up, 21 on the board for the Yankees. They haven't changed the runs yet. I guess they don't want to. It's 19 to 8. Might have run out of nines. <laughs> Runner at first, nobody out. And Posada deals with Myers. 2 0. Hit into right center field. Damon cuts it off. And the first four Yankees have reached here in the ninth. Ruben Sierra is coming up. There you go. Today on Fox, NLCS game four, St. Louis at Houston, 4 Eastern later this afternoon. ALCS game four. Here at 7:30, a single, a homer, two more hits after the home run. Still nobody out. Here's Sierra. Ball one inside. You know, before the series started, Francona was saying how he would use Myers. He's a situational guy to get a lefty out. He talked about maybe Hideki. Or Bernie, or turn Bernie around. You know, this is just not his role. This is not what he is accustomed to, and what he's done all year. He's really a sacrificial lamb right now. He went through a scoreless eight, but they ran Myers back out there for the ninth. Obviously, the score, the game is out of reach. But Myers is just trying to do all he can to avoid further trouble. That ball was a few feet foul. Down around pesky pole down the right field side. Almost left the park for a three run homer. Yeah, the Red Sox pitching over a period of five days has gone from more than formidable to desperate. Two on, nobody out, and a breaking ball is called for strength three.
Hideki Matsui on Tuesday night. Two weeks ago. Knocks in the winning run against the Twins. And just kept on working. Drove in the first run of this ALCS. And it's been one hit, one long ball, one double after another. Of that highlight, three of those hits were quality pitches. Areas in which down and away, off the plate, reaching for it. Really, the irony of it all is, of all the hits that Matsui has, the one guy who made a good pitch to him for the Red Sox was Schilling. With that split finger pitch, it was right off the top of the plate, and Matsui still got it in the left center field in game one. For an RBI double. What's what's uh, remarkable about him, among many other things, coming to this country, the different cultures, but to have adapted like he did. The year is last year in Japan. He had 50 home runs. He had only 16 last year, and to have adapted, made the transition as well as he had he deserves an awful lot of credit well he hit 31 this year yep. and you wonder yep. with the way he's built these first two years what next year yeah. has in store for Matsui and the Yankees good point Tony Clark it's still two and two and hitters gain an advantage the more they see pitchers just like with the interleague play, when we go out of the league to play another league and they only see us for three or four at bats, the advantage is to the pitcher. Clearly. So for Hideki to come over and not struggle, but not do as well as everybody had anticipated, he could only get better. As he has this year. Now it's three and two on Clark. Nineteen to eight. Three two pitch Clark stays up there. You see Tony swinging at that I, I wouldn't be surprised if Ruben Sierra walked by him said you better be swinging. Because that pitch on Ruben was on the outside corner. And in a blowout game like this late, better be swinging. As Clark continues to do, and it's still full. Franchise postseason record. I mean, you could just keep piling up these statistics. Go back to the 36 World Series. For the record that the Yankees just broke here tonight. 18 runs against the Giants. 36, 19 tonight, and a chance for more. Two on, only one out, three balls, two strikes. Clark rips it on a line, and the base running of Bernie Williams. Line drive, double play. 5 4 as Miller threw to Bellhorn. Bottom of the ninth inning. Red Sox coming up, they trail it 19 8. Tom Gordon takes over Brown Vasquez who gave the Yankees four and a third very important innings Quantrill now Tom Gordon and Mirabelli is first stop for Boston with Nixon and Millar to follow one final record this game will eclipse will be the longest nine inning postseason game with regard to time on the clock. Crosby stays in the game. He's in right field. Quantrill's night is finished, and he pitched well. He did give up two singles, but went an inning and two thirds, struck out two, walked nobody, no runs.
Here comes a 1 1. Mirabelli takes ball two. Hard to believe that in a game where the Yankees starter Kevin Brown lasted only two innings, they will roll into game four behind a guy like El Duque, Orlando Hernandez, who has been bothered by a tired shoulder pretty much with a rested bullpen. The exception being Vasquez, but I don't think that really upsets the situation for the Yankees. They will have Sturts. But why is it if they need a long guy? And Gordon, Quantrill, and Rivera all ready to go as Mirabelli pops it up, one out tonight. The producer of tonight's game, Pete Macheska. The director is Bill Webb. Our thanks to Steve Horn, our editorial consultant in the booth, the associate director, Kathy Hunt. The producer is Aaron Stoikov, broadcast associate Kevin Dresser. Chris Long is the feature producer. Technical producer is Dave Hill, and the technical director is Jonathan Evans. Jerry Steinberg is the vice president of operations. As Nixon takes the ball. That was the 400th pitch of the night. Thrown there by Flash Gordon. out of play 400 pitches a ton of good swings a ton of balls hit hard and a ton of trouble for the Red Sox their only hope will be to make history by trying to come back from a 3 0 deficit the Yankees are on the verge of Again, representing the American League in the World Series. The 1 1 pitch, Nixon hits it foul. Just to finish the list, the studio show produced by Gary Lang and directed by Jeff Wynn. Coordinating producer of the studio show is Scott Ackerson. Studio technical supervisor, Jack Simmons, and the senior producer of Fox Sports, Bill Brown. The executive producers, David Hill and Ed Gorin. One ball, two strikes. On Nixon. The NFL schedule tomorrow. And it's game four of the NLCS, game four of the ALCS here on Fox. Nixon hits it hard into center field. Bernie Williams back over his head and off the center field wall. Nixon has a one out double. It's a fastball out over the plate. Outer half. Nixon got a great swing on that. Stayed on the ball. Nearly hit it out. Something left to cheer. It's a one out double, and Kevin Millar will step in. The winner tonight will be Vasquez, the loser, Mendoza. Millar, one out of four, pops it foul. A double run scored, one for four this evening. There's an optimistic fan with a rally cap on. <laughs> Down 11 in the ninth. The pentacle of optimism. Here's an 0 1. That gets away, and over to third goes Nixon. More. Got faith. One ball, one strike on Millar. It's a wild pitch charged against Gordon. Oh. 
Millar takes ball two. And this is pretty much the time of the night where anybody can yell anything in the crowd and it will be heard. Right. The 2-1. Two, 2-2, two two, good pitch from Gordon. It's a four-seamer running away. Just kept riding away from Millar. Looked like it was about outer half, and when he committed, it was off the plate by about a foot. Millar strikes out, two out. And the Yankees are officially now one out away from a three games to none lead, something that has been staring everyone in the face for about two hours. A five run fourth inning followed by a two run fifth inning four more in the seventh and the Yankees have pounded their way to a three games to none lead in this ALCS the difference from a year ago when it took extra innings in game seven for the Yankees to dispose of the Red Sox now the Red Sox are going to have to come up with a rally that would go down as the best in their franchise history. 2 0 on Miller. And I don't mean in this game, I mean in this series. Here's a 2 0. Miller flies to center. Bernie Williams is there, and the Yankees win it. A final of 19 to 8. Gordon gets the final outs. And what an amazing, impressive night for the combination of Sheffield and Matsui. So the final, 19 to 8. The Yankees win it.